about the gold. I'm gonna, I'm gonna win gold. I'm like, this is my time. I'm gonna set the world record. Um, and that didn't happen. Nikki Hiltz, finalist at the 2019 World Championships. What will they do here as they cross the finish line under 4.30? Ooh. I got lit at Denny's. <laughs> <laughs> Denny. Are you coming on? <laughs> Come on now. You got twerk certified ring right here. It definitely gets my stamp of approval. The proof. bike would be this like weird. I saw some guy that was all hunched over and it's really dangerous. Why would they do that? Cheers. John, you in or no? Sign him to an NIL deal. Right? Yeah, we're gonna we're talking to our lawyers about this, Gary. Don't worry. Being able to work in a team. What is up, track nerds? I'm Chris Chavez, and welcome to Sidious Mag Live, our first ever pre meet show. I'm joined by my colleagues Kyle Merber, the host of and the creator of the Lab Count newsletter, world record holder, and a seven year professional. We've got Caitlin Hutchison in the house as well, who made the trip out from Lexington, Kentucky. She is the host of Out of the Blocks, one of the podcasts on the City of Smack Podcast Network that focuses on the sprinters, and also a kick-ass sprinter at the University of Kentucky right now. Uh, guys, it's Milrose Week. Uh, it, it's just one of the most exciting days of the year. I can't contain my excitement. Kyle, how are you feeling? It is Super Bowl weekend. Yeah. You know, I don't <laughs> know. This is the biggest sporting event. Of the weekend. I don't know who's playing on <laughs> Sunday, but I, I've got like 150 people who are going to be out here tomorrow that it's all I can think about right now. It's like Christmas Eve. I know. I've been wanting to go to Milrose for I don't know how long. I almost was able to come like two years ago, but now that I'm actually here, I'm like, oh, snap. Y'all saw me dancing before the pregame show came on, so you know I'm sorry. So what the goal for this show is going to be is we're going to break down all the races. We're going to share our predictions. I'm going to go out there and hit the field and try and get some some live interviews with people. Uh, just really build up the storylines before tomorrow's broadcast on NBC from 4 p.m. to 6 p.m. Uh, be sure to tell all your friends to tune in and watch because it really is, what I would say, the highest quality indoor meet of of the year. Yeah. It's, it's the best two hours of track and field imaginable. If only we did this every single weekend, we'd be <laughs> oh in some place, God. wouldn't we? But right now, we're at the Armory. Uh, we've got the athletes warming up behind us. Over the course of the next couple hours, we have athletes taking the bus up from Midtown. They're going for a run. It's like 60 degrees out, you know, a little bit different than we saw last weekend in Boston. And last year, there was a blizzard, uh, a blizzard at the weekend of Milrose. Yeah. Jesus. Yeah, we get those up here. And so it's, you know. I know a little bit about New York, okay? I went to school out here. Uh, and the tough part, you guys have plenty of blizzards. <laughs> I know. But so the athletes are coming up, and they are just going for a few-mile shakeout run, hopping on the track, testing out some spikes, making sure the bank feels familiar and everything. And so it's you're getting that atmosphere right now. Some people are trying to play cool, trying to pretend like they're not nervous. But it's, you can feel the tension starting to build. Yeah. I mean, we put out a graphic on our Instagram. We've been doing this weekly where we tell the fans, just exactly how you know how to tune in and watch you know the events and the funniest part was for this particular weekend it was like and honestly should it just be Milrose games because I had to rattle off we've got Noel Lyles, Abby Steiner, Ryan Krauser, Christian Coleman, Ollie Hoare, Anna Hall, Laura Muir, Katie Moon, Chase Ely, Ajay Wilson, Alicia Monson, Elise, Elise Cranny, Caitlin Tui, Leah Hobbs, Sinclair Johnson, Yard Nagoose, Cole Hawker, Cooper Tier. Joe Klecker, Drew Hunter. It's like a Coachella lineup yeah. of track and field <laughs> athletes. And so uh, I'm, I'm pumped to, to start to break down some of these races. I feel for the athletes that you left off. There's just way too many. You didn't make the top 30? You didn't oh make the goodness. top 30? <laughs> Chris, it's name right. them all or name them none. Yeah, yeah exactly. I'm going to get roasted when someone clips this. <laughs> uh, all right, so do we want to start getting into some of these races? We've got a lot oh, of them please, to break let's down. Go. All right, let's, go. let's do this. So oh, let's start high. with the women's 60. Sure. And Caitlin, you in particular are very excited for this one. Oh, I am so excited. And y'all want to know why? It is the Aaliyah Hobbs show. And I think y'all know why. Two PRs and one me at Razorback, I think a week or two ago, was absolutely insane. And I think the best part about this is that she hasn't ran like a 60 PR since 2018 when she was still repping LSU. 
And when Aaliyah was repping that LSU uniform, she was a absolute demon. Like, I would be scared to race her on a track if I'm being so entirely serious. So that's going to be super exciting to watch. She already ran 698 um, this past weekend. Um, so that's an amazing PR for her. But, you know, I'm calling her to win just because I feel like she looks the smoothest right now and she's, like, so in form. But... Everybody who's lined up for this list, Makai Briscoe, Mary Beth, Melissa, everyone is an absolute superstar. We've got so many people running 7-0s and like 7-1s, so I think it's going to be a tight race. But for me, I'm going to call Tamari and... Save the picks. Oh? Save the picks for later. Save the picks for later? Okay, okay. And you're yeah, also yeah. doing an end? I think <laughs> there's just one. You can't pick I can't, more no, than one person. No, no, no. Person. I was going to call them as two and three. I already uh, said who I thought was going to win. Oh, you've got everyone. <laughs> yeah. Um, you know, you know storylines, looking down the list, someone that I'm really excited about seeing is Melissa Jefferson. Yes. Ooh, my girl. So she she's run 709 before. Yeah. You know, she ran New Balance, opened up the season. She ran 725, not where yeah. we want to be yet. But this is the U.S. 100-meter champion. And if you are the and U.S. The champion, champion. Yeah, if, you're, if you're the best in the U.S., then that means you might be the best in the world at any yeah. given year. And so when I'm thinking, you know, young, talented athlete, I want to see her really just get that jump, that first 10, 20 meters that maybe she didn't have in New Balance. And just the idea of, like, we're building for the whole year. The 100 right. is her event. But you got to get that first 60 down. Yeah, 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 Her and Carl have definitely been working. I don't know if, like, you follow them on Instagram, but I see them post all the time, and Carl is putting her to work. So I believe that this season she could pull off something crazy again. It really is refreshing just, like, this new era of 60, 100-meter sprinters that yeah. we've seen in recent years because I feel like for the longest time we had some sprinters really holding on to that uh, that dominance there. You know, it was, it was Allison Felix for a bit and then Carmelita Jetter, but now it's sort of like it's it's a wide open race where you really have to show up on championship day and perform. And yeah. so uh, for me particularly, you say Melissa Jefferson is the U.S. champ. I honestly think that like Aaliyah Hobbs is positioning herself and took a lot of lessons from last year being a very healthy year for her because you know that that's been her biggest struggle is how do I stay healthy and perform at my best she had one full year under her belt where it was it was nothing but top performance after top performance that I think the year two of being fully healthy and what we're seeing indoor season Melissa Jefferson versus Aaliyah Hobbs is going to be very entertaining yes. not just not just this weekend but just for the the coming months as well well don't so, leave out Briscoe though like she, I know right she's yeah. got the medal and, and it's like, like often on. overlooked yes 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 I know a lot of people um have been definitely overlooking her but I'm like her PR is still 699 and she still ran 71 this season like that is her season best so please do not leave her out. so we're saying 699 meet record 700 yeah. It's uh, from 1994. That I wasn't at the Armory. Down. That was not Gail at the Armory. Devers. Yeah. yeah. So, you know, we've got a few athletes in here who can definitely take a look at breaking that. With no world indoor championships, yeah. this is the world indoor championship. Oh, uh, I, I agree. This Let's do that. Let's call it. Like, we should just start calling it world <laughs> yeah. indoor Change unofficially. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, a little bit of kudos to English Gardner, uh, yes. I think, because, you know, she's 31 now, I believe, and, like, still hanging in there tough. I have a podcast that's going to come out with her, I believe, next week. But, you know, it's it's that thing. She's always been a big uh, a fighter all throughout her career. I mean, just things off the track and, and, and on the track with injuries. English Gardner has still stuck around. Part of me, I guess, like, Kyle, I think you feel the same way because she was our era of, like, collegiate track and field. Always it's like, biased. We're always biased <laughs> to the point where it's like, it's good to see that she's still sticking around. And so, you know, in front of a... I would, I would say a home crowd because she's in the tri-state area in New Jersey. Um, I'm excited to see, you know, what she can put together. But so the women's 60, we'll give you our picks later on in the show. Let's move on to the men's 60, which it's like. This might be the most hyped up. It's. Most years, it's just like the Wanamaker mile. That's the hype. That's and what there everyone... You, there you see the guy who really oh, brings Lord. a lot oh. of the attention Mr. to this Steppa. event. You know he loves the Mr. attention, Uncle and he is, he is a gift to the sport right now because he is talking his talk, but he is walking his walk. So Noah Lyles, he ran 6.51 for a big personal best last weekend to win the New Balance Indoor Grand Prix. He took down Trayvon Bromel, the former world champion in the event, and someone who is known for being a starter. And 
Noah is not known for being a starter. We'll say that again and yeah. again. But he's now made himself into a starter I mean, with that six five one. But you got to think of what he's chasing after. He already said he wants that world record in the 200. And we already talked to his coach. He said, if you want to run the world record in that 200, you have got to be a 9-7 kind of guy. And so they have been working really hard on this 60, trying to perfect that start. So that way people can stop saying, oh, no, we're starting at this on the third. Because if you want that record, everything has to be perfect. Well, so let me break it down. I did it in the lap count this week. I'll, I'll tell you right now. 2017, Noah ran 6.63. Later that year, he ran 19.90. Yep. In 2018, he got down to 6.57. Then he ran 19.65. In 2022, when he started really focusing on the 60, he ran three times last year, three different meets. He ran 6.55, another personal best. And we saw the 19.31, an American record. Now, he ran 6.51. The season's not even over. That was his first time out, or second time second out, because he, he had the rust buster in Gainesville where right. he lost God his brother. <laughs> he becomes a 6'4 guy. I think it's going to be scary. And everybody, and you know, people people are really mad because every time they bring up Noah trying to break the world record, they're like, nobody can run 19-9. And trust me, I love you, Usain, and I want his legacy to stay here forever and ever. But records are meant to be broken, and if Noah's the guy to do it, then why the hell not? Here's what I love talking about Noah like he breaks it down for us oh i'm the biggest nerd like i, I sit down with him and he's just o open textbook basically i mean the reason i've been like tweeting these clips of, of him breaking down these races to me is because like you know that breadth of of access that he that he brings it's sort of like imagine if you got the chance to sit down with tiger woods before the masters and he was openly telling you what he'd been working on and how it's going to benefit his game that's what Noah's doing week in and week out. And so for this week in particular, he's riding the high from last week, but knows, I asked him, all right, so now break it down for me. What point of the race do you think you need to really nail down this week to beat Christian Coleman, another world champion that, and, and he said it's the acceleration phase. Uh, because, and he argues that Christian has the best acceleration phase. So, it's not going to be easy. Noah is, but there's just so much momentum on his side right now. And I think, you know, he was also telling me if you watch the full interview that we did, it's on our YouTube channel, um, 12 plus minutes long. He's talking about like what he did in practice the last couple days because he did sleds on like Tuesday and then like blocks on like Thursday, got a massage and then hopped on the plane and came to, to New York City. It's like he's not really all that used to going week to week in terms of racing, but that's what you need. You, you need to be able to race on a tired body during the world champ uh, during the world championships and U.S. championships. And so we've seen how he thrives. He's a guy who thrives off of rounds. I just don't know if like you know he can if he can master that phase against someone like Christian Coleman. Yeah. Well, so you know something that's really interesting before we get to Coleman, who yeah. obviously you know Noah ran fast. Christian's still the favorite. Yeah. yeah. Um, but something that was really cool after New Balance, you know, in the mix zone, everyone's going crazy after he won. Like, oh, my God, the implication, implication. And we had an opportunity to talk to Wallace Spearman, yes. who's one of the U.S.'s great all-time 200-meter runners. And he was telling us a little bit about, like, what that means to be good at the 60 as a 200 runner. But even more so, like... Everyone keeps saying, we're working on something. We're working on something. Yeah. I'm like, what does that mean when you hear what sprinters you talk about? They're in the lab. Working I'm in working. the lab? Like, you in the stew? Like, what, what you cooking <laughs> on, bro? <laughs> and something that I, I've really enjoyed is Noah's YouTube channel. Yeah. Like, one oh, of yeah. the, the best YouTube channels out there in track and field right now. And essentially what Wallace was telling us is, like, they're working on things in practice day in and day out to work on a start for the 200 and obviously the 100. But the race is when we see it if it's working or not, yeah. essentially. And, you know, that first race in Florida, yeah, you know, it wasn't fully there yet. Rust buster. Rust buster. Hate the term. He hadn't done to speed have work a bad yet. Race, though. But now, you know, with another week under his belt, another week working with his team, analyzing, you know, how's that upper body and lower body getting out of the blocks? Are they in sync? Um, I just feel like he's such a student of the sport that I, I just see a really high trajectory. Lance Brahman, who's done now two interviews back-to-back -back weekends with us and really kind of also talked about Noah's training, you know, it's the fans and us, we get caught up in the excitement of like, yo, he just took down Trayvon Bromell. How are you going to beat Christian Coleman? And for him, it's like, you know, honestly, like, this is all just building, building, building towards the outdoor season. We're not even looking at any of this as like we need to win these races. It's more so like what can we learn from the 60 that's going to translate to that uh, to that 200. And it's 
uh, the most casual way of just brushing off the fact that you're taking down some of the biggest names. Um, so, so as we're talking, there's Coach yeah. Raman right there on screen. So as we're talking about how fast Noah's 651 is, we have to really just uh, realize the world record by Christian <laughs> Coleman is 634. Yeah. It is like many percentage points faster <laughs> than the second fastest of all time. Mm -hmm. Just... I I don't know too many regular people who are just running six threes. It, uh, nobody fun. runs. Uh, <laughs> nobody runs six threes. Matter of fact, no one else is running six thirty four. It is unbelievable. The two thousand eighteen world champion in the event yes. in twenty twenty two, he was a silver medalist. You know, we've seen him in twenty nineteen win the world championships at hundred meters, and you know he opened his season up last year, Milrose, which was a big deal at the time in six four nine. So like. You know, he's not as rusty right now. He's really not. Well, so the, 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 that's the bar. The big thing with Christian last year was, and he told Caitlin this yesterday yeah. during the press conference, he put a lot of pressure on himself last year because it's sort of like after the long layoff he had between races because of this suspension, he worked his way back. And it, it's clear that the entire time he didn't just like sit on his couch until it was time to get back to work. He was working the entire time. But you know, you just don't get the reps of racing. Last year was a full year of racing for him, but there was the pressure of like, all right, I need to get back to, you know, being world champion. And I think like that just was a lot weighing on him. Right. Now that he's kind of put that behind him. And I think he's coming in hungry. I mean, uh, granted how last year, USA sweep in the men's hundred, yeah. and he wasn't part of it. Like uh, there's just so many things that I think are working into mo like motivating Christian to to get back to being the top dog. Yeah. And I think the best part about it is that well, you know, I get to see him at practice every day. I don't train with him obviously. Uh I'm under coach Green's group. He, he's training with coach Hall, but coach Hall has been putting him and Abby to work day in and day out. And all I'm going to say is that when something crazy happens this season, you can't be surprised because coach Hall is really trying to make sure that Christian's back in form because as you said, like, he's the favorite. People know who he is. People are really rooting for him to come back. Like, he could fall on his butt, like, a billion times, and everyone's still going to be like, no, it's the Christian Coleman show. So I'm really excited to see what he does. Um, and the work that I see him put in that practice, like, it's definitely going to show up at some point. Is this a two-man show? Uh, I think so. But I also got to give some kudos to our boy who's in this race, Nicholas Harper. I just want to see what he oh does. Oh, my God. Of course, of course. I mean, big boy wants to play. He's going to get a South chance against Carolina the pros. Yes. to play both, you know, football and run track. Right. You know, this season he ran 664, and he is 6'5, 225. He's a big pounds. boy. I'm yeah. listen. <laughs> I'm not, I don't know. That is a big kid. And uh, he can move. So, uh, you know, excited to see him. And he's someone who, whose interest and popularity is starting to transcend beyond track. Yes. Which, Which is it's really like, cool. I hope we're able to keep him around in track enough so that, like, stay at it, bring us some of your eyeballs. I hope we can talk to him tomorrow. I, and for sure, we're going to get him in the, in the mix zone. But uh, just, yeah, I mean, he's, he's wide open in terms of just, like, sharing in the journey posting all the photos of the college decision but also like enjoying track very clearly so like we just got to hold on to that track star and then there's one guy in this race who's already beat noah this year josephus yeah <laughs> who false started last week unfortunately but he ran 660 in florida and he, yeah. he beat noah so you know he's a guy who's knocking on the door of making the 200 team yeah and so you know we're, we're very excited about noah's progress and he's got a good training partner who's doing the same exact thing right yeah. now I looked at him during the mix zone uh, last week, and I was like, jo Josephus, do we have to change the false start rule? And he <laughs> just laughed and walked off. So uh, hopefully no false starts uh, this week. Fingers crossed. All right. You know that we are big throws guys and big throws gals here woo, woo. at City of Smag. Let's move in to the men's shot put, which is billed as just a classic duel between Ryan Krauser and Joe Kovacs. This is particularly very interesting for me because Krauser yesterday during the press conference openly shares that he is going to be unveiling a new technique. And what does that mean? Uh, he's going to shoot it like What's it's it a basketball. What are we uh, calling it? <laughs> it, the, the technique is going to be called the Krauser slide is what his what? Uh, That's pretty cool. What his teammate and training partner has called it from being able to see it. But what we know as of right now is that his first throw is just going to be, you know, his standard approach. He's going to start testing it out on the second throw. And then from there, see how it goes. 
right now, he's not really throwing world record setting distances in the uh, with this new approach. The new approach starts from a t totally different side of the ring. He said it's gonna be very, very visible. And after this, I said, I asked him, so like, if I'm a high school college kid, I'm gonna watch this thing and probably wanna try it out and practice. He's like, it's nothing really all that revolutionary. He started testing it out in December in practice, said if this is working in January, he's gonna stay with it. And the goal is break his own world record during outdoor season. And this could be a step forward that he's taking by taking a little bit more risks. Like, we all know about Ryan Krauser's dominance and how many 22 plus meter throws that he's got. This is just a, a live experimenting that he's going to have. And so I'm, I'm so curious what it's going to look well, like. Well, he's already got sort of a, a signature move in the way that he pushes off the back of the ring. Like right. That's, you know, we now see other athletes starting to replicate that. And so I do I feel like this is like the Fosbury flop of shot put <laughs> right now. Like this is late into track and field history. We're still trying to find new ways to do it, you know. So um, I, kudos to Ryan for just being like the scientist out there who is guinea pigging himself. Yeah. The other part uh, that's exciting about this showdown is Joe Kovacs, the Diamond League champion uh, coming into this. Joe uh, came at the World Championships was really kind of a man on a mission. You saw him, saw him doing some blowout, just sprints in the middle of the infield, and he came close to, to, to upsetting Ryan again uh, for the World Championship gold medal. But, you know, Silver once again rebounded, won the Diamond League, and then after that welcomed a pair of twins. Now, Kyle, you would know just, like, the importance of being a father and present for, for, for your kids. Uh, he's flying. Joe is flying in tonight on Friday, doing the meet, and then flying back. That's like what that's, you gotta do. That's just dad life. Yeah, I mean, he's got responsibility now. <laughs> and, feed the kids. And bring you know, home the bacon. <laughs> yeah, really. Honestly, win. Bring home the bacon. <laughs> and uh, you know, I I think that if you have two kids, like I feel like I'm getting a little bit stronger carrying my one around. You know, that's that's some weight training everywhere you go if you're Joe. Yeah. I want to see him uh, pushing a stroller when he does like his one 200 or 400 at the beginning of practice. Just bring out the stroller for that. Uh, dad strength, something we have to account for when it comes to uh, Kovacs heading into 2023. But yeah, I mean, this is a, a classic duel between the two of them. Last year, Nick Ponzio, this was really kind of a, a big uh, coming out party for him when it was like he was rocking his Italy gear from head to toe, the mustache and everything, the personality really uh, shown. and. Last year, shot put here had a, a couple malfunctions, and you know they, it got invalidated in the results. So things, I, I believe, things have been sorted out. Things will go smoother here this year. And also, there's an interesting component as we move into talking about the women's shot put is that the men and women are going to be alternating during competition. The top three in each group are going to be coming back later on to um, make their final throws. So. It's a little bit interesting because uh, the women's shot put is a world indoor tour event right now, and so there's points on the line, and it kind of maybe disrupts a little bit of the, the, the flow of it. But, hey, kudos to the organizers for, for innovating. Uh, the women's shot put uh, stars to watch in this one, of course, Chase Ely, world champion, who's going to probably be knocking on the door of the world record Later on, I think, in the season. I did talk to her yesterday, and she said that she's a little bit banged up right now. Nothing too major, just like uh, just a slight little niggle in, in, in practice that came up. But she's here. She's ready to compete. Chase Ely, definitely, I think, the, the heavy favorite in this one. I mean, she was unbeatable last year. She just kept getting better and better. I think ever since she moved to the U.K. to to you know start working there full time it's just working you know she's doing she's keeps getting better and better i don't know if she's experimenting with anything she did she did she did she's she's making a couple slight little little tweaks in, in training but uh nothing to the point she said she's very curious to see what what ryan breaks out and so it's the type of thing this year like when we talked about noah lyles's youtube channel being a really cool valuable resource ryan krauser is also out there putting up you know tutorials and and training videos uh so just I, it's really cool when the best in the world are that transparent with their training. So, you know, after we're done with this video, head on over and check out both Ryan Krauser and uh, Noel Lyles' YouTube channels.
But yeah, big throws, guys. Of course, we're going to be interested in seeing how that all shakes out. And I believe it's going to be taking place in in the infield. Yeah. That's how they've done it in the, in the yeah. last couple of Center years. Center stage, the circus over during here. the sixty. Like they're going to be throwing <laughs> yeah, over yeah. them. No, no, not not at all. So that is the shot put. What else we got next? We got well. well I, I hear that we've got one of the big stars in the building, Abby Steiner. Yes, she she off the bus. She's here. Um, I think we we've got some uh, footage of her downstairs working out, probably looking good. But I mean, Abby Steiner, Galen, what kind of a season is she having already? What is going on, dude? Like, oh my God, she is moving like absolute. I don't even know. Like her form is literally smooth like butter as she's been moving. Um, and I have no doubt that like she is going to be an absolute monster in this 300 um, this weekend, mainly because when she was in Arkansas, 50, 56 PR in the 400. I think that 300 is going to be a cakewalk. Like you don't just run 50, 56 and, and not expect her to do something great in this 300. Well, we got used to seeing her race a lot last yeah. year. And 57 she, races, I think. She Ooh. has no shortage of range. But am I crazy to think a 300 at this point in the season might suit her perfectly? I mean, last yeah. year, she opened up her season with a 300, and she ran 35.8. That was yes. in December of 2021. At the time, she was not Abby Steiner. Like, it was Abby Steiner, but, like, it but wasn't not the Abby Steiner the we know today. Abby Steiner that we know, we know today. today. This is a very much, like, a sweet spot for event. We've seen her excel in hundreds. Yeah. We've seen her split 48 in the 400 before. And so, world record, 35.45. I mean, it might happen. And my thing is, is, like, with Abby in particular, it's, like, every time I've seen her race, it's not like she gets tired. It's like she gets to her top speed and, like, she just holds it. Like, it just keeps, like, it just stays there. And that's great when you're thinking about events, uh, specifically with the three and the four, where it's like, when by the time you get to that last 100, everybody's tired. They want to, like, not be running anymore. And she's just like, no, I'm still chilling. Like, I'm good. And coming down that last 100 is about being the most efficient. And if it's one thing that I've learned about Abby through watching her at practice every day and, like, seeing her race over the year, is that she's always about efficiency and making sure everything is perfect. And if there's one track where we know that these bends can handle someone with that sort of <laughs> speed, it's definitely the armory. Yes. Yeah. I mean, Caitlin, I guess, how would you go about attacking this world record? Do you pace yourself during a 300? The way Gab Gabby Thomas broke it down last week was that she's like, I'm just going to go hard for 200 meters and then hold on and, and until I get to the finish line. No, like, no, no, you don't pace it. Like, it's literally balls to the wall when you're talking about world records. Like, we can even think about to Wade Van Niekirk's, um, like, 400. Like, he did not hold back at all in his race. And... I think somebody said like he went to the hospital like after like he ran that because he ran so fast. So it's one of those things where it's like when you're trying to go after a world record, it's about taking risk and about just trusting your training and knowing that you have it within you to do that. And you can't do that by by holding back. And so maybe the best way is to do it like what Gabby Thomas said. Pray. Go just hard hold. for 200 <laughs> meters and just hope you can make it across the finish line. But at the end of the day, it's just like if you're going for a world record or any record in general, like you just you just got to go for it. So the question then is, you know, it's Jenna versus the clock or, you know, no, or, or no, sorry. Is Abby versus the clock or is Jenna maybe going to come in? Here? She didn't so, look amazing last weekend, no, but like but her, her acne would say that she could be the, right in there. The thing with Jenna, though, is like the one thing that Jasmine kept emphasizing this summer is that Jenna's a vet. Like Jenna's going to always make something shake. And my thing is, is like. She's not going to let herself go out sad. And also, she does have a new coach, you know, getting used to different training, different coaching, different training group. Like, all of that stuff can definitely play a role as to why last week didn't go as great as she might have wanted it to. But Noah didn't have the first hey, six you, there you go. Hey, there you go. And look at where we're at, like, right <laughs> now. So everyone's allowed to have a rust buster. So I think she's going to come in here. I don't think it's going to be Abby versus the clock because Brittany is well. Okay, yeah. She's People no are sludge. sleeping. Like, she's literally no sludge. And so I think what will happen is going to – I don't think the race is going to be super, super tight. Like, I don't think Abby's going to open, like, a two- or three-second, like, I don't know, gap between her and the rest of the field. But I think those other ladies, they're definitely going to be able to hold on. So that American record of 35-71 by Quinera Hayes, yeah. very much under threat, obviously, from yes. Abby. Also, Brittany. This is, so Brittany ran 35.95 a couple years ago. Yep. But 
the thing that we got to look at is how she opened her season. She yeah. opened up her season with a 719 in the 60, mm -hmm. which was a, a solid 0.2 second, two tenths yeah. PB. Like, we're talking about it with Noah. Now we're going to see it in action with Brittany. Like, yes. what does that mean for the rest of the race? I'm, I'm, listen, if it was me, if I was the American underdog and went out to world championships and snagged me a medal, I would brag about that until literally the day I die. Like, the rest of my career could be absolute crap, and I'm still going to be bragging about it. So that's why I never count Brittany out, because why everybody be saying, like, she got that dog in her. Like, like literally, she has something about her that I feel like people keep forgetting because everyone's like, okay, well, we have Abby, we have Jenna, we have all these people, we have Melissa, we got, we got Aaliyah, but... Brittany is continuing to make a name for herself, but I think it's going to be an interesting story to watch because she's going to keep running fast in the in the shadows because no one really wants to pay attention to her. And so when she pops out again and does something make crazy, them pay. Like, make them pay attention. Exactly, exactly. All right, so we have those picks coming at the end of the show. We'll see. We'll see across the board who who we got. I I think there's going to be some where we're going to have a little bit of debate and banter, but then there's some where we're like, this is yeah, like, we're I all in agreement. It's going to be this right. person. Um, all right, let's move to the men's 800. The meet record, the Army record, is 143 by Michael Cerrone back here in 2019. And really, this one, I believe, is fairly wide open. Uh, Clayton Murphy has the fastest personal best in the field. Bryce Hopple has also run 143. Didn't have the best race last week at New Bounce uh, Indoor Grand Prix. Noah Cabet is the one who looks really good. He's a world championship medalist indoors here last year. Opened up at the Lilac Grand Prix, rocking the new Union Athletics Club uniform. Uh, it's just, I don't know, there's just so much working in his favor right now that I think he comes into it as the favorite. But the Americans don't want to let that, uh, the, the, the Kenyan steal the show Chris, here. Chris, I, I have news for you. I think you're the only one who is probably knows that Noah Cabet might be the favorite because you've got the sexy names up top right now. You've yeah, got Clay true. Murphy, you know, Olympic medalist, Bryce he, Hopple. He won this race last year. He was second. Uh, he was a bronze medalist last year at World Indoors. Yeah. But the guy who finished right in front of him, Noah Cabet. So, I mean, Bryce is traditionally doesn't miss. He's a, He's super consistent. And last weekend, he ran 146. He finished fourth in New Balance Indoor Grand Prix. Noah Cabet ran 146 earlier in the season in Lilac. But I was talking to Coach Pete Julian, and I said, yo, how good is Noah Cabet? And this is the coach of Donovan Brazier. And he was yeah. like, he's an animal. And he's, but he's only got one strategy, and it's all gas, no brakes. But that, that's worked for, like... Nigel Amos in the past. It worked. And, and David Rodisha, that's how he ran the world record. And it's like, it works in the 800 if, if you're strong enough to, to hold the pace. Yeah, but you know what? And here's the thing is, though, he's versatile. And that's if you go down the list of athletes in this race, they're all versatile. It's not like back in the day where it's like, oh, like, Dwayne Solomon's going to take us out and we're all going to get in line and see what happens. All these guys have done it every single way. When Noah Cabet won the Kenyan Championships last year, like the senior Kenya championships when he was 17 years old, they went out in 55 and he came back and he closed it down and he won. The thing that I do notice about him, because I've watched every race I could find out there on him because I'm interested in him. I think he's going to really make a name for himself tomorrow is when he makes a move, he makes the move. Yeah. There's no two moves coming. He'll make one super hard. Maybe it's right before the bell and it's just, let's see if we can hold on. So do you think that there's any way like, this has been textbook just sort of like telegraphed already over to the likes of Clayton Murphy. They're like, hey, this is how Cabet runs the race. What, what do you do? If you're Clayton, how do you try and win this race? Well, so Clayton is someone who, funny enough, has this very similar racing style to Bryce. They love sitting in the pocket. Yep. They just, they just like to coast. Um, Clayton often is willing to wait a little bit longer than Bryce. Bryce, I think, likes having it with 200 meters to go. Oftentimes, we see him take it right before the final turn outdoors and right before the bell indoors. So I think the thing that might be a shock for everyone is that this race might go slow. Okay. I, I don't know if anyone's jumping on the rabbit here. The only one who I would have maybe thought had a chance, and that's because of being an NCAA athlete and needing a standard, is Cade Flat the other animal in this race? Yeah, but the thing is with Cade is like, you know, honestly, cool flex to make your NCAA debut at the Milrose Games. The last time you were here, you won a high school national championship. But 
I've got a couple question marks around Cade because he posted on Instagram the other day a photo of his ankle, and just three weeks ago he could barely run. Yeah. And yet. doctor said he would never run again. <laughs> I don't know if that's true. But the thing is, though, is like you guys are just talking about like some of these people are just all gas, no brakes. It's just like the only strategy is just going. I think it's the same thing with Cade too. Listen, he. His ankle might be messed up, but I still think that he's going to try to blast it. That's just how I feel. Well, this, I, this is opportunity, really, yeah, to right. get that time out of the way. And he also, like, has nothing to lose at this point. Like, it's your opener. I mean, the, like you said, the last time you were here, like, you won. Yeah, and do some research. What's the last plays at the Monroe's games? Typically, how yeah. fast do you go? <laughs> yeah. Because it probably ends up pretty high up on the uh, the Tifers list for, for right. NCAA no, qualifiers. this is what happens, and I'll tell you right now. <laughs> We're going down these lists. Someone always bombs. Okay. Every well, every Melrose race, there's one person who is jogging it in. You never know who's it going to be, but it's early in the season. It's a wild card. It could be anyone. Last so, thing on Cade, I did text him, ask him, like, hey, how are you feeling? Uh, this is before I even saw the Instagram post. And he was like, it was a very short response. He said, feeling different. And I was like, all different. right, I don't know what that means, but <laughs> all right, we're no going with it. We got the bubble guts or something? Yeah. Uh, other guy who we got to keep an eye on, Tonatio Lopez. Yeah. I mean, we've seen him consistently win races. When we're at a meet, he wins races. <laughs> yeah, just for us. So he's, he's a 143-4 guy. Like, so, you know, the question almost comes down to, is this a U.S. win or is this an international win? All right, yeah. I mean, U.S. versus the 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 rest of the world. Who you yeah. got? Uh, save the picks. Save we'll it. talk about save them on, later. Chris. Uh, let's move in to the women's 3K. Uh, this one in particular has two of the best American distance runners in the country right now. It is headlined by Alicia Monson and Elise Cranny. Elise Cranny, the two-time U.S. champion. But Alicia Monson is just super fit right now, riding a winning streak. I was super, I was very impressed with how she did at the Dr. Sander Invitational here just two weeks ago. Uh, we obviously saw the workout that she put together uh, it, at altitude when Mac went out to, to Boulder to visit them. I'm just left with just more question marks around Elise because I, we don't know as much about how Bowerman's been training. They've been in Flagstaff putting in a, a good block, and she was a late entry to this. A late entry signals to me that it's like, all right, things are good, and it's like I can mix it up against Alicia Mons, and I don't think Jerry would be sending her if he didn't think that she would be in contention for the win. I think you said it. Like, What was that workout last week that was, <laughs> you know, all right, let's do it. Like, yeah. We're going to go for it. I love a late entry because there's just clearly something is clicking. But Alicia Monson has been the story right now indoors. I mean, ever since Mac went out to Boulder and watched her run a mile, you know, and then she followed it up and actually ran 423 here at Dr. Sander Invitational, we know she's fit, but she's not a miler. You know, like, I think the 3K is a little bit close to her sweet spot. She is the defending champion. She won it here in 2019 in a Wisconsin uniform. Uh, you know, she's run 826 outdoors like yeah which she, is number two u.s all time elise is i think down at fifth from the same race so like when they the last time they did go to head to head was at the lausanne diamond league at this distance and alicia came out on top when they've gone over five five k ten k i think that's where elise kind of gets a little bit of the edge so we're meeting now back you at three k except elise has broken four for 1500 yeah yeah well it's yeah it's it's a very interesting but 3k is alicia's sweet spot yeah and i would say there's no way chris schweizer's eight uh 825 american record makes out this weekend alive no. um the the rabbits are being asked to come through in 67s wow so we are i mean all this talk of uh, the sub four mile versus the sub 430 mile uh yeah they, these ladies want to go through in under 4.30. And it's not the only Carissa Schweizer record that is uh, under threat. She's uh, Carissa Schweizer's NCA record is also on watch. 8.41.60. Because in this one, you've got Caitlin Tui, who, when she's in this building, just turns it on for the friends and family who are sitting in section whatever it might be. This is her house. Like, has run countless high school races, ran the NCA indoor mile record here just two weeks ago. 3K again, another chance for her to shine in front of uh, in front of a home crowd. I 
she's also going to have some competition from Mercy Chalangad. But the thing that impressed me the most about the way Caitlin Tui ran that mile was that she wasn't afraid to stick her nose and just stick on with um, Alicia Monson and Whitney Orton in that race. So I'd like to see that again because if that's the case, she's going to blow past that record. Yeah, I, I, and that's the thing is like we're we're queuing this up as a, a two woman race. This is a four woman race. Yeah, I think Whitney and Caitlin ran exceptionally well. They couldn't get around Alicia on that last lap, but they are in it. And now we're adding fourteen hundred meters to the mix. Who knows who's got it and who doesn't? Yeah. Uh, so yeah, in particular, we're gonna save our picks to to the end of the show, but lots of options in in this one. Uh, let's move into. The men's 3K. We'll go on the flip side of things. This one, one of my favorite races at last year's meet because there was obviously some nice hype and attention around the pro debuts of Cooper Tier and, and Cole Hawker, but at the same time, ended up being just like a massive flex for the On Athletics Club with, you know, Ollie Hoare winning the Wanamaker Mile. Alicia Monson winning the women's 3K and Jordy Beamish doing textbook George and just kicking down the field in the in the final uh, I would say 150 meters uh, making the big move and upsetting uh, both Hawker and Tier. We get a rematch between Tier and Beamish, but the most intriguing people I think that have been thrown into this one are Luis Grijalva, who looked super smooth running 353 in his first time breaking four minutes for the mile just a couple weeks ago in Boston. You've also got uh, Josh Kerr, who decided not to run the mile where he was second last year and instead is going to move up to the 3K. And uh, you've, you've got uh, Joe Klecker, who just broke 13 minutes for the 5K for the first time ever. Three guys who could also just win it. This was tough. I mean, Mac was struggling before the show saying, who the graphic? Like, who are we going to put on here? Is it... Cooper, is it Jordy, is it Luis, is it Joe, is it Kerr, is it Nico? They're the star powers so deep. And so he went to a YouTube poll, and that's how we decided <laughs> that <laughs> Jordy and Cooper were going to be our graphic as the two favorites. I mean, Klecker ran 1254 just last week, uh, you know, like, I, but then Josh Kerr, Josh Kerr, is that an error, Mac? Did you accidentally mean to write 753, 853? <laughs> no, that is actually his 3K PB. Uh, I had to check it like four times. I went to Tifers, I went to World Athletics. You called his That's parents what, and everything. Yeah, and you're just like, exactly. Are you sure? Actually, yeah. it, it, if that isn't his PB, Mac's got it's fat not fingers. on the internet. Well, so <laughs> the thing about Josh, we know he's an Olympic medalist. He's run 329 for 1,500 meters. He's run 348 for the mile. But he's also run 13.23 for a 5K, so I'm guessing that his personal best probably <laughs> is from that race somewhere in there. But the thing for me that got me so excited about Josh in this race was a half, half marathon. marathon. <laughs> I mean, I think he's run 145 for 800, and now he signed up for a half marathon in the offseason, San Diego half. Everyone's yelling that it's a little downhill. I don't care that it's a little downhill. He ran 63 minutes for a half marathon as a guy who we know has wheels. So he is clearly coming to this meet quite strong. And Josh, very similar to the Bowerman Track Club, we don't see Josh race until he is ready. He does not half-ass it. He doesn't have rust busters. And I know he thinks he can win. So, you know, it's it's an intriguing lineup. We know that Nico's going to be there. We know that Cooper's going to be there. We know Jordy's not going to be there. And then he's going to be there. Yep. So uh, There's so many different ways that this one can play out. I, and, you know, I think a number of guys in this field aren't afraid to take the pace and go. I think what's super interesting, too, is that I think some of the guys who are in that mid-pack, where you've got a Nico Young and Olin Hacker, Dylan Jacobs, they've learned from racing a lot of these same guys at BU over the last couple of weeks. And so, like, maybe we're, we shouldn't be discounting some of them either. Because I think, like, there's especially someone like Nico Young uh, has the potential to use a race like this to really break through. And it's one that in the past we've seen, like on the women's side, someone like Alicia Monson, a collegian, win. So so when we watch Yard run the American record of 728, he had to do a lot of that by himself. Yeah. Now all of a sudden we're throwing some people in the mix here, uh, you know, fast pace. Is that record possibly under threat already? And this is before Grant Fisher heads to Europe and try to take crack at it himself. It'd be very funny for them to do it right in front of Yared, right before he runs the Wanamaker Mile. Uh, 
yeah, I guess like we haven't heard what the requested pace is going to be for this one. I think that there's also part of it. You know, it'd be really funny. Here's how I, I could see it playing out. Joe Klecker is tired of hearing about Woody Kincaid over the last two weeks that he's going to uh, stick with the pace. With, with the pacer and try and break his own uh, break break an American record here so that he he gets in the headlines. I think Joe Klecker might just be tired. I think he's still <laughs> on the track at BU. Has anyone gone and scraped him up and told him he's got to do this? His again? Instagram story, I believe, he posted that he's at the at the hotel, so he's made it to New okay, York. Thank but, God. Uh, yeah. So we'll we'll catch some of these pros as they're warming up on the track shortly, uh, because there was a bus that just made its way here about uh, 30 minutes ago. So athletes are maybe out there getting a couple miles and then going to step on the track. And then when we later on in the show, we're going to take this thing mobile and I'm going to try and get as many interviews as possible. So stay with us. Let's move in to the next event. Yeah, but let me just quickly give a, a piece of advice to all the professionals who are watching. You know, beautiful day right now in the winter of New York. They're all going Riverside down, which is kind of like the traditional armory Warm up loop. Really? I warm up the other way. Well, that's, the hills. that's 100% incorrect. <laughs> um, the move the day before is on a day like this, you got to go GW Bridge. Oh, wow. You got to. You got to run. You're probably running 30 minutes. You can make it to New Jersey. Anyway. When right. you were when you were a pro, did you see people going up and you just laughed as you went on the GW? Or was it just. Nobody. Oh, it's you just ran up? <laughs> yeah. Nobody does that. Nobody does it. <laughs> All right. Let's move to the men's. 400 meters. Last week we saw a tight race in this event at the New Bounds Indoor Grand Prix. Caitlin, break this one down for us. Why does this one stand out to you? This race stands out to me, especially because of what you were talking about with that tight short, that tight race uh, last weekend, and with Noah Williams literally winning by a chest hair, coming across the line. So I think it's going to be a hot race, mainly because. Currently, Jareem and Noah have the same season best right now of 45.88. So, it, honestly, it's anybody's race between the both of them. But we cannot count out Michael Cherry and Bryce Deadman. Michael Cherry in particular because he is the Olympic champion in the 4x4. Um, Two-time indoor medalist in the 400. I think he got uh, silver in 2018. But also, he was a spot shy off the podium in the Olympics in 2021. So it's going to be exciting to see what he does because I remember the year of the Olympics and everybody's like, oh, we don't know if Michael's going da -da -da. But he's like, y'all better stop playing with me. Look at him. He loves the show. Happen. He's taking a photo <laughs> of the Jumbotron. Hey. We're saying really nice things about him. He's like, y'all have to, like, I'm going to make it happen. And that's what he did. Like, yes, he was a spot shy off the podium. But, I mean, you still got a gold medal from that 4x4. Four four, so he's not tripping about it too bad. And then also Bryce Deadman. I know there's always a lot of controversy between like, oh, if you if you if all your medals are from the relay, then you not really this that and there. I mean, but let's talk about the absolute depth of the USA men and women's 400. If you are put on that relay, you are no slacker. So yes, most of his uh, most of his medals, uh, actually all of his medals from major championships are from 4x4s, but there's a reason why USA continues to put him on that A-team relay because he's going to make something happen. So honestly, I think this race is going to be super, super hot, um, but I think it's really going to be between Williams and Richards about who comes across the line first. So, you know, Dream being the world indoor champion, we know he can run. Michael Cherry, though, Mr. Consistent. This yeah. guy, this guy, all right, so... He has run under 45.5 on 56 occasions. Wow. 56? 56 Where did times. Where you get this information? He has run under 45. He counted himself. Counted. Oh, my God. <laughs> the rest of the field combined, 36. Whoa. So if you are trying to think, like, where's a safe bet, Michael Cherry might be the one for you because he always shows up. Clip That's that, true. tweet it. He's on. He's he, uh, Michael Cherry is <laughs> among some of the most active guys on uh, track Twitter. He's gonna yes. enjoy that you pulled out that stat. I'm sure he Do knows you think, that. Stat. You think he knows it? I don't know. Three, I don't three, think three he of, does. Three of the four guys in the field are under the have personal bests that are under the meet record, so we can watch for that. 30, uh, 45, 35. But yeah, I mean. This is another one. Tight finish is what you're expecting? I say tight finish. Definitely going to be a tight finish. Oh, okay. So, Caitlin, I guess, can you explain to some people, in this event in particular, lane draw is important. Lane draw Where is do you want to be? So, if you're a taller individual like me, you would probably want to be in lane five because when it comes to being strategic about that cut-in, it is everything. My thing is, is that... 
if you get to the cut in first, if you get to that break, you can still win that race despite whether or not your PR is faster than everyone else in the field. Because the thing is, when you get to that cut in, if you can hold on for dear life and drag everybody else with you around the track, like, you got it. And I think we saw that very specifically at the NCAA Indoor Championships. I forgot what year it was, but the year that a thing um, didn't win the Indoor 400 when everybody pours her to, the thing is, is because the girl who won from USC, she beat her to the cut in first. And so... From there, you're really struggling to, like, keep up with the pace that you're having. You're having to move around people. It's a lot going on. And with the 400, there's not a lot of space indoors to kind of get yourself back when you're fighting um, after you get to the cut-in. So it's very important. If you want to get to the cut-in first, you probably want an outside lane. So This is what I love. Like, the 400 outdoors, we're just everyone is so a circle. such divas <laughs> like yeah get your lane no one's allowed to touch you in your lane and the 400 that second lap indoors is it's a boxing match it's crucial it's they will throw both like listen it it's a boxing match to be entirely honest and if you are paying attention or if you really trying to be in the mix you better get ready to fight for it because a lot of these people that run the 400 they already tell y'all we are crazy in the head we're sick Okay, <laughs> so I'm just saying, if we all come into the cut in, you better be prepared to fight for it. Well, I'm, we don't have a full preview for this event, but the craziest event indoors is the the boys four by two hundred. <laughs> that is honestly the most dangerous event in track and field. I know you can say javelin or any throwing event because if you get hit, you might be gone. But no, indoor four, javelin, indoor javelin. <laughs> <laughs> you know who's in the in the high school boys four by four by two uh, tomorrow? Nicholas Harbour. Oh, uh, oh no. Archbishop we gotta Car get that kid on the interview. Man. Uh, Archbishop Carroll is gonna be running, and then try boxing that kid out. <laughs> okay, if I you told me I had to box that kid on the track, I'm sorry, I forfeit. You got it. We don't even got a race. You know that the famous photo in baseball is Aaron Judge standing next to Jose Altuve. I want a race where it's Brandon Miller standing next to uh, Nicholas Harbour. Four hundred. In a four hundred. Yeah. <laughs> Um, all right, so that is the men's 400. What event should let's, we let's move go to, to the, next? The women's 60 hurdles. Oh! Women's 60 hurdles. Kaylin, I mean, Man, this is talk, your event talk. right now. I'm just saying, everybody who comes out of Kentucky camp, I'm biased. So let's talk about the absolute superstar so far this year out of this field, Devin Charlton. Who we left off this graphic, and so our intern just got fired. <laughs> <laughs> You're gone, all right? So, Devin, um, if you all don't know, the current uh, NCAA record holder in the 60 is Masai Russell, one of my teammates. Devin and her train together, and at practice every day, it is hurdle for hurdle, step for step. These two women are literally going back and forth so often in practice, and it's such a wonderful thing to watch because both of them are out to break records, out to get medals, and they have such a great relationship. So it's no surprise um, that Devin has been running super, super well this season, along with Masai, uh, mainly because both of them have got some really great accolades under their belt. Devin has an indoor medal um, from this past season at Worlds, and as I just said, Masai is now the indoor NCAA record holder. So it's going to be super fun to watch and see what Devin has to run today. So I have her as the favorite, honestly. Uh, what's made Kentucky so special in terms of just, like, being – Hurdle you, basically. Hurdle you. Oh, my goodness. It's because when I watch those ladies um, at practice, they are so dialed into everything that they do. Like, everything matters. Like, foot placement. Um, Not how like quick the 400. The oh my <laughs> foot placement goes out the window. <laughs> Literally, foot placement. They're always dialed in. And, and sometimes it's scary, like, watching. Like, I'll be, I'll be getting ready to do my 200. And I'm looking across the way, and I'm like, I would not want to, like, bother y'all right now because y'all are so locked in and so focused. And I think that's the most important thing because hurdles is such a technical event. Like you said, you can't just get up and run it one day because if you try to, you might fall and bust your face. Um, so just seeing them in practice and being so um, – paying it so much attention to detail, I think that's what sets them apart. Well, someone, you know, Anna Hall's kind of decided she can do anything. She decided oh, yeah. to just get up one She's day. She's superwoman. Yeah. She's literally superwoman. You had a chance to talk to her? Yeah, I got a chance to talk to her yesterday, and she said she wants to put more attention to the multis because too many people don't really pay attention to them. But I think with the nutty stuff that she's been doing this past year. The what stuff? The nutty stuff. Caitlin's nut moment <laughs> 
<laughs> we need oh, a peanut oh butter God. sponsor. <laughs> yeah. Um, but with her in particular, <laughs> there she, she was. Is. She was saying how you know she wants to make sure that multis get a lot more attention. And I think what's interesting with her is that she's not afraid to take on an extra event outside of the five or seven that she's already doing. We saw it at NCAs last year. Thought it'd be a great idea to run all of her multi events on top of the 400 hurdles. And she even let me know yesterday that at USA's um, in a couple weeks, she's going to do the multi and the open 400 because she's hoping that she can get some more 400s under her belt to be on the resume because she wants to be a part of that 4x4. I think. Ooh, yeah, Caitlin I, with the scoop. She wants to be a part of the 4x4. And I honestly. The girl has got crazy strength. There's no way that you do an entire multi and a 400 meter hurdle race and then decide that you want to do it again for indoor season. Like nobody does anything like that. So I think she's definitely got the stamina to do it. It's just our 400 um, USA's is very, very deep. And as we saw, like, I mean, Abby was put on the relay and she's not a 400 girl. She runs the two and the one mainly. So it's going to be interesting to see. Hopefully she gets her chance, but I, yeah, I, I just feel for the coaches who have to make that decision. The women's 400 in particular, it's like I added, did a podcast with uh, Dula Muhammad, and she was like, yeah, I want to be part of the 4x4. Who the, wouldn't? The four They're going to break it's the like, world record. Like, like one each of time years. out, it's like, how, how long is that wait list? That wait list goes down like, it's another Coachella uh, Yeah, <laughs> It should be list. a fan vote. I think I that's the only way to do it. I was saying last night, you know, we could put a Z team out there for the <laughs> <laughs> for the USA women's and men's four four by fours, and you're still going to demolish every single country because there is just so much death. When we talk about um, colleges being like hurdle you or whatever, USA is 400 you. <laughs> like if you want to run the 400, I mean. You probably might want to run for another country because our, our biggest uh, our biggest exports <laughs> 400 women's 400 meter runners that's what's listed on we Wikipedia. Just gotta find people Literally. who want to do that mixed relay. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, so, <laughs> I volunteer as tribute. This is what happens with when uh, Anna Hall comes on screen. We don't even remember what event we're talking about. <laughs> yeah. We're talking about the 60 meter hurdles. hurdles. All right, I do just want to shout out Mia Lee 78 on that PB. Yeah. Um, the 2019 world champion in the 100 hurdles. But now she, I think, is in Orlando working with the new coach, John Go Coughlin, uh, you know, of Jasmine Camacho Quinn fame. Yeah. Yeah. Let's see what let's see what we're working on right now. Yeah. So, and I mean, one, yeah, go go for it. And Caitlin. one more thing that I just want to mention when we're, when we're bringing about uh, specific people, Anna Cockrell, I wanted to touch on because she was a part of the boot crew this summer. I don't know if you saw that picture between me, her, and Jasmine. So, she was saying how she had a little bit of a hurdling accident, and so we all ended up in – the boot crew, but she's not in the boot anymore, and so I'm excited to see what she's gonna do Gives in the you little today. hope. I know, I think she's gonna do really well. A lot of people were rooting for her when she made the team for Tokyo in 2021, so it's it's honestly great to see her back. Can I say, don't sleep on Anna Cockrell? Like, we haven't really mentioned her, but like, yeah. this is uh, very one of few indoor meets I think that she was planning on doing. Yeah. Uh, seven seven ninety three is her personal best mm -hmm. semifinalist in the 400 hurt uh in the 400 hurdles at the olympics yeah we're seeing a big trend of like these 400 hurdlers dipping down to the 60 hurdles just yeah. to get a couple cues onto like very similarly to how noah lyles does it in the in the short sprints it's like yeah you're going to benefit from this later on right. in the season so you gotta have speed like the 400 and whether it's hurdles or no hurdles, you have to have speed. And so it makes a lot of sense to see a lot of people dipping down. I honestly don't think you could show up to the Milrose Games without having started speed work. <laughs> so, yeah, true. All right, let's move in to the women's pole vault. All right, so last weekend, you know, we, we saw a little bit of an upset. And, you know, Katie Moon, the Olympic champion, the world, world champion, champion, she's jumped 495. She ended up not winning the event. I believe it was uh, Bridget Williams who came out on top there. And so we're, we're back. It's just a week later. Bridget jumped 477, which was a nice personal best. Who's it going to be? Yeah, Is this, it the, the one with the accolades or the one who just won? This one I, I did find interesting because, you know, Katie Moon was part of the uh, press conference yesterday, and she did say, yeah, I mean, last year around this time, she was struggling with that post you know, the post-Olympic hangover and just injuries. Now, similarly, she's got mo more motivation, is in a better headspace, but just wasn't there. I think last week you can consider, like we've said before for a lot of people, the first time out. First time out, get it out of your system, and then maybe, you know, the craziest part to her is that she's won at these major stages, Olympics, World Championships, has yet to win, 
at the Milrose Games, and we know that that's what really counts, Kyle. The yeah. bragging rights. Bragging rights, but I mean that's a that's a really cool tri trifecta to have on your resume. I think we're gonna see her, you know, give it a really good shot. I don't think you could sleep on the 2016 Olympic champion Katarina Stefaniti, uh, who is just like I don't know, like the longevity has been on her side. She's been she's a veteran of the game. She's come here and won before. Uh, so I don't know. There's something to that familiarity with the facilities here and and how it's all done. Maybe this is the, the the time for Katie, but Katarina is also someone who's who's knows how to turn it on here. This is one of I'd, I'd say like outside of being in Mondo's hometown in Sweden, yeah. having like you know all of Red Bull production team focused on you for an event. The Armory's got to be one of the coolest places for yeah. athletes to come because you are vaulting above the fans. Like you, you're hitting that second. You high five them on the way down. Yeah. Like you are in it. You are surrounded. Is electric. And you know there it's. It's rare that I feel like this many people are paying attention to field events and you get here and you put the shot put in the middle and you get the pole vault going and undivided attention for those attempts. And so it is an electric atmosphere. I think we're going to see some big jumps. Big jumps, guys. All right, let's move to the women's 600 meters. This one, a little bit of a spice got taken off of it uh, a couple uh, couple days ago when a thing Mo announced that she was no longer running. But that, uh, that could just be because she knows that Aj this is Ajay Wilson's house. Ajay, <laughs> who has not lost at the Armory in nine, nine is it nine or ten years officially? Nine, wait. Ten. Ten years. Ten years. How old were you the last time Ajay Wilson lost at, at the Armory? I was probably like 12 or 10. Yeah. Math checks out. Math Definitely checks not out. 11. But... AJ Wilson dominates at the Armory, has a Milrose winning streak, has an Armory winning streak, looked good at the Dr. Sander Invitational where she won the women's 1K. That one was impressive to me just because it's like, yeah, Sage Herta Klecker made it known that she was going to go after the women's 1K American record. And AJ was like, yeah, I might not have that in my wheelhouse. I'm just going to run my own race. And Sage ended up coming back to her AJ executed her race perfectly came out with the win i she just knows this track like nobody knows how to race it was raced every single one of the women in this field before and and, and has known how to beat them ah, you feel for anyone else in this race yeah, you, look i the maturity of ajay is that she now runs her own races and we saw it last week she didn't go out with kale edwards in that that's right and that first 600 and then closed down the last 200 she knows herself she knows her fitness and the way that I see this going is we've got a couple really fast starters. You got Shamir Little, who ran 124.6 yeah. at Arkansas earlier this season. I mean, Shamir is strong. Like, that 124.6, we, we can build off of that. I just want to say that I'm really proud of Shamir because I remember she was saying how the first time she ever ran an 800, it was so bad that she literally ran over to like the timers and said, yo, like don't put this on the internet. Like I don't want this anywhere. But she has not been afraid to race over 400 meters in the past year or two. She's been running sixes, she's been running eights, and she's been doing them very, very well. I think she's poised for another great outdoor season when it comes to the 400 hurdles. Yeah, well, you know, she's run 50.6 for 400 this yeah. indoor season. What does it look like when she goes out in 52 maybe, you know, like 53? That yeah. world record, world record yes. went down earlier with the season by Keely Hodgkinson. Yeah. We just saw her turn around and run a 157.800. She's coming at it from a little bit more of a strength side of things. Shamir coming at it from, you know, the speed side of things. Right. Ajay's just coming at it from being really Ajay. good at the 600. She's run 122 outdoors. Now can she run close to that indoors and, yeah. and grab that world record. So, um, you know, it's also then you got Natoya Gould, who hot race every man. 800. She's the one who takes it yeah. out. So I'm not worried about them getting out. It's just a question of does Ajay stay tight enough that first 300 meters that in the last two she can get around and chase the clock. Do you think it's going to be a tight race? For a while. And then... Don't say. And yeah. then where do? Okay, wait. Where on the track do you think that someone's gonna pull away? Uh, Aj is gonna make a hard move. And I'm not gonna say if she gets caught. Oh, okay. No, but, uh, <laughs> someone's gonna make a, a hard move going into that bell lap. You don't okay. want to be passing anyone on the turns. Okay. 
And then we've also got in this field something to watch. Sofia Guerrion, who is the high school star, num- ranked number one, I believe, in the 500, 600, 1K, mile, 800, uh, has run two Absolute flat beast. outdoors, is actually making a college decision later today. That will be announced Ooh. at 4.30. Stay tuned to our Sidious Mag Instagram when we uh, post that news later on. But uh, she's got a chance of, uh, a, well, actually... I think Mo's uh, high school record is a little bit of a, a tall order, and she's already sitting at number two, but you can close the gap. Which I is think. the American record. Which is the American record, which is kind of nuts. But, uh, yeah. Let's I, – I, I do think a personal best could be in the cards for her. Yeah, of course. So uh, that is the women's 600. I think we have one event left. We've got two events left. Oh, the men's event. and women's mile. Uh, let's start – Ladies first. Ladies first. Women's mile. Now, this one is... Oh, oh <laughs> look at these names. So tough <laughs> to decide How on. How did you guys decide who to pick? Because this is... Yeah, oh it, the intern God. just kind of like we said, hey, if, this, if these don't look good, then you're, you're out. The intern, <laughs> you know, put put these together pretty quickly. Laura uh, Muir coming to Milrose, I believe, for the first time. First time Milrose debut. Last time she was in New York City, she blasted a 414? What? We need a, we need a triple crown in New York. So we've got... The Long Island Mile is gone. Island, yeah. <laughs> so you've got the fifth to have. You've got Wanamaker... I mean, if the prestige of the New York City Grand Prix picks up, the New York City Marathon's pretty big. Yeah, yeah. you have to win all of them. <laughs> so Laura last weekend came out. She won the 3K at the New Balance Indoor Grand Prix. If she ran 8:40, and she was dominating. But then that last lap looked hard. Looked hard, and and uh, M- uh, Melissa Courtney Bryant ended up finishing within a second of her. And that's like, I don't know, not all that common that like someone is right on Laura Muir's heels. Um, the way that she runs was very similar to how you were sort of describing Noah Cabet knows one speed and it's go. That's Laura Muir. Um, and we've seen her kind of experiment with tactics here and there. But if she really wants to blast this thing and take a shot at, I believe, L. L. Perrier St. Pierre has the, the Milrose Games record, which is the also the indoor American record. Uh, Laura Muir is the person to do it and, and can attack it. I the. So as you can see on the on the screen, Sinclair Johnson, the U.S. champion, finished sixth place at the World Outdoor Championships. She is really coming into her own as possibly the top U.S. 1500 meter runner uh, until maybe Ellie comes back. Um, but but Sinclair has been having a really strong uh, last 12 months and is probably like the top challenger on paper to Laura Muir, but then you can't, there's just so many names on this list you can't discount. Josette Norris, who scratched from Dr. Sander, but is putting in a good training block with the On Athletics Club. Lucia Stafford cannot sleep on. The Canadian star who ran the 1K American record just a couple weeks ago. North American record. North American record, too. Uh, Nikki Hiltz, they just blasted a mile at altitude, so I don't know. It, let's let's. We, what we need on this set right now is a dartboard that we can just throw, uh, and that's our pick. Yeah, you know, it's it is wide open. It's going to be fast, and I, I just see there's too many women together for it to do anything but. And that's kind of become synonymous with the the Wanamaker miles. Like this thing goes, it, it gets going quickly, and I think Laura's best race is to make it fast. I mean. She's run 156 for 800. She's run, you know, obviously won that 3K, but she's run 830. She's strength. She's speed. She, we talked to her after New Bounce. She went to Miami for the week because she wanted to get some warm weather. She could have stayed in New York. It hasn't been too bad. <laughs> um, but, no, this is circling on the calendar, and I think that uh, the fans in the U.S. and New York hopefully, like, really appreciate that for an athlete of lower stature that, like, coming to the Milrose Games and competing here is a bucket list thing that yeah. you have to do in your career. Yeah. I, I think it's, it, like you said, we need a triple crown. What would you say are the most prestigious indoor miles to win? Milrose? Milrose mile. <laughs> number one. Is there any other one? It's not often run. All right. This is number one. It's the only one. <laughs> um, and then, oh, uh, my, probably a mile at BU or yeah, something just like that. The, the, <laughs> The last chance meet at BU. Um, Gisette, New Jersey's own, coming here. She's going to have she, a strong fan base. She she ran great here last year, gave Ellie a really good chase. 
And I have loved her move to OAC. I think it's just, I think it makes a lot of sense for her to go there and work under Coach Ritz, a really strong training group. And of course, you know, her training partners, Sinta Visa, as well as Sage Herda Klecker are in here. Do the three of them, I mean, we're talking about the guys. Team of, strategy. Of the OAC, what they might do. The women, you know, is there a world in which we get some team tactics going? Potentially. I don't know. I, you, the, I When I spoke to the guys, the OAC guys, yesterday during the press conference, I did find it a little bit interesting. I mean, this doesn't seem all that uncommon, but I wonder how it translates on the women's side. He has individual meetings with each one of them before the mile race and gives them all di very different directions. And I really wonder, it's like, how different are all three of those? I mean, you've raced your former NJNY teammates in the same race at, at something like Milrose or at BU, like how does that work with a coach? Yeah, what happens is coach goes to you and he says, sit in third, and then he goes, the next guy goes, sit in third, and then he goes, the next guy says, <laughs> sit in third, and then after the race, anyone who didn't sit in third gets in trouble. Okay. Yeah, it's like, why didn't you sit in third? I told you to sit in third. <laughs> so, hedging your bets as a coach. All right, let's move to the final event that we're going to preview before I go out and hit the field for some interviews. The men's Wanamaker Mile, this is the marquee event the most historic event of this meet and we've got ollie Hoare, the defending champion coming back to try and defend his crown but it will not be easy he's got cole hawker the u.s olympic trials champion he's got a uh johnny gregoric who's number two on the u.s all-time list and then it's i, I think ollie Hoare's biggest competition might be coming from his own teammates and Yard Nagus, who blasted that 3K American record at BU just a couple weeks ago, and Mario Garcia Roma, who ran 3:30 for fourth place at the World Outdoor Championships. But I, I, while it might be OAC, 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 just kind of like grabbing people's attention right now, people are sleeping on Cole Hawker, I believe. What camera can I look at, Mac? Which camera? I, I had something to say to everyone in this race. All right, so Eric Sawinski. Goes out to Boulder. He's, he lives in Boulder to work out with the on guys this week, which is not uncommon. They all live in Boulder. But he's our rabbit. They're bringing him through 153 and 809. If you are in this race and you don't think it is in your interest to go out in 153, 153 through 809, then don't let him. It's a race. If that's Ali Hoare's strategy, if that's Yara Nagusa's strategy and they want to do that, you don't have to give them the top two positions in the beginning of the race. It is a race. It doesn't have to be a 346 record attempt or anything. So I, the thing I want to see is someone like Cole who maybe says, I'd prefer a 351 race, slow it down. How do you do that? You, you take the first hot steps off the line, you pretend that you're getting on the rabbit, and you don't. And then let the rabbit go, and then you say, all right, once they realize, well, now you have to make the big surge to reattach or get on there. But it's not in everyone's interest in this race to be as fast as possible. And I think of, you know, when we saw Kajelka come out here and run 347, like, I don't know, that was one of the most boring Milrose miles I've yeah, ever watched. Right. Like, this, this race is prestigious enough. I don't even think we need rabbits in it. Like, winning this race is everything. And... I know that we're getting a lot of hype about going after Bernard Lagat's American record and maybe world records. We don't need records here. Like, I want to just know who's going to win this head-to-head -head matchup. And I do think that it is in the favor of the OAC guys to make it go really fast. You know, of course, Yard's American record in the 3K, Olympian in the 15, Ali won in 347, Mario's run 330, fourth world champs. Those guys want it fast. If I'm Cole Hawker, let's make this thing a 200. So does it have to be Cole who falls on that sword? Or is like, is there outside, because he's, he's a lone wolf. He doesn't have teammates in this race. Like, is that a conversation you're going to have with another competitor being like, hey, Neil Gorley or hey, Johnny, like, let's do this. Yeah, I mean, look, Sam Tanner, Neil Gorley both ran 352 last weekend. Yeah. And they're both guys who have run really fast in the 15 before, but maybe they're not ready to run 347. And if you're not ready to run 347, then it's like, let's clog it up a little. I think guys like Johnny Gregork and Sam Prakel who train together, maybe it's in their interest to, to Noah's now stopping by to watch the show. We should get Noah's picks. Uh, <laughs> this is it now. That's uh, pretty distracting. It's uh, pretty distracting when Noah Lyles shows up. Yeah. Should we, should we bring him on? All right. Let's bring what on our, our special guest. Un unexpected, but I'm, I'm here yeah, for I it. Mean, if you're the American record holder in the 200 showing up on our show, like you're 
you're going to get a mic. So let's do this. We're doing it live. We're doing it live. We're going to come down to the track and find Noah. Caitlin, you're, you're, you're the best at hyping people up. Introduce the people watching. Look into the camera. Who our special guest is going to be here? Everyone, if you are watching, we have the, I'm going to say it, Future world record holder. Oh! At the 200, <laughs> Noah Lyles pulling up to the live show. He told me to say it again. Future world record holder in the 200, ladies and gentlemen. Give it a round of applause. I'm going to stand over here. I don't yeah, know. You want to share a seat? You want to share a seat? Share a seat. You know, can you know you, what? Um, you get it. You get it. On the bus when the bus is all crowded. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You got to share <laughs> half a seat together yes. on, the, on the edge right there. Don't I we love it when special guests just randomly pop up on our show? That, that, that's the fun thing. It's How did everything world's feel out there today? We were it was watching. pretty fun. Uh, to be honest, I feel pretty loose, which is usually really good to feel because it gives me time to tighten up my body. Uh, if you kind of think of it as like a spring, you know, you're kind of coiling the spring more and more and more. And by the time you get to race time, you just want it to be at the peak and tightness. Love that. So you explained to me that the, ex the acceleration phase is where you need to really kind of master this week to possibly come out with the win. What are you doing today on a day like today to get to make that better? Yeah, it, today's kind of already been like set. Yeah. Um, we're doing flies and we did like three block starts and it, it's really all about kind of like visualizing what you want that to look like. Uh, I was literally like woke up today and USATF posted Christian Coleman's, you know, world record at the time. I, mean, I think it was like it's 34. And uh, I was just like watching it. I was like, okay, let me watch this first like set 10 steps. And um, what's actually funny about that race is like, Ronnie actually got out on him on the first three steps yeah. and then Coleman came back on it. And I was like, okay, what was the difference? Why, why did that work versus why it didn't work for uh, such and such? And what can I, you know, add to that? And I was just like, oh, you know, I, I'm really just kind of pull back that arm. So today I was just working on pulling back my arm to get my foot to, you know, drive into that track. So the one thing, we, when we were going through people's PRs, so six, six, three, four, right? Yep. It, it is? Yeah. How ridiculous is that for you, like, as a competitor, even, like, kind of just try and process? Man, I, don't even, I ain't got to worry about that. <laughs> but to the fans who, like, you know, you throw out numbers. Numbers are hard for fans sometimes to it just is. swallow. So, like, how do you explain that to, like, the average Joe, like, how fast that is? All right. Um, I'm just, this is how I explain how fast I am to everybody okay. when they say that they want to race me. I promise you, I promise you $100 that as soon as I take my first step, you're gonna quit because you're gonna be so <laughs> disappointed in how much gap I put on you. That is gonna, you're just gonna be disappointed. Like, I think and, I then, and everybody's bucks. like, no, 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 no. <laughs> that, that person says go, and I'm three steps ahead of them before they've taken their first step. And they're like, uh, dang, I'm out of $100. <laughs> That's what it is. So no, how much fun is it being out here the day before? Are you like having a good time saying hello to everyone or are you strictly business? Uh, it's a little bit of both. It's like, I know what I want to get out of today, but at the same time, um, I know it so well that I can go out and you know, say, hey, joke around with a few people. Like, I saw Drew Hunter today, and that's always good because I feel like whenever I see Drew, it just reminds me of, like, the high school days where we were tearing it up in 2016, and we were, like, turning pro and showing everybody that it, it could be done out of high school, and we were breaking records. Like, it's always a good thing to see Drew and still coming out here. So, it's, you know, sometimes you have fun, and sometimes you, you're just – really keyed in on what you really want to get done. What's the rest me? of the day look like then? Yeah. Oh, truthfully, um, I'm going to go back. I'm going to eat. I'm going to get treatment at 3.30. Um, I'm going to go out to the Adidas store, buy a few things. Um, you have to buy it? They don't no, know. I mean, it, it's like you get reimbursed, free? basically. You get reimbursed. Uh, but, you, you know, you got to buy all the cool stuff. All right. <laughs> don't reveal it yet, but what's the fit tomorrow? And, like, last week was, was impressive with the, yeah. just, like, the NBA-style walk into the yeah. stadium. There's plans for that this, uh, this yeah. weekend, too, right? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Theme is street fashion, New York street fashion, and uh, to give a vibe, I gotta go pick up my Adidas Gucci bag from the Gucci oh. store today. Oh, so. <laughs> slight flex, slight flex. <laughs> well, uh, I keep asking about the Omega watches, you know. Yes, like, yeah, yeah, what are we yeah. wearing? What are we wearing tomorrow? Uh, this is the Apollo 8 right here. Oof. It's actually probably one of like the rarest watches that I have. They gave it to me as my race, my first race watch, and. Every time I wear it, they're just like, oh, man. Like, any aficionado of, like, watches would be like, how did you get that? I'm just like, they just gave it to me. <laughs> <laughs> but it's not my most expensive. This is, like, probably, like, my third ex most expensive watch. But it, it's super light. Like, I mean, I could show you right now. Like, you, you'd be shocked how light this watch is. Oh, man. Run. Run. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I think you'll get it. Love it. Love it. One of the cooler sponsors to have, I think. Yeah, it yeah. definitely is. Like, having a watch sponsor is, like, 
one of the coolest things you can have as a track and field athlete. So a meet like Milrose, like the the fans are like right on top of you when you're just like walking out onto to the track. Yeah. Uh, I guess can, how do you, how does it compare to like all these other places you've been? Obviously, there's a lot of hype around Europe in terms yeah. of just like oh Europe, you have to go to all the other meets because the stadiums are packed. But this yeah. place gets loud. Yeah, it can get pretty loud. It, it's kind of weird because. I remember we were talking yesterday, and I was talking like all track meets are really all comers meets, and they really are. And it can be a good thing and a bad thing. It can be good because you're right next to the fans, but it can be bad because the officials are also your fans and keep trying to take pictures. Yeah, with you, you saw that. I saw that in YouTube. You were saying that in Florida afterwards. Yeah, it, I've had it happen here too. Oh, I've man. literally been like doing my last few build ups, and the officials were like. Like I'm trying to take a picture. He's like, I have advice. I have advice for this. Come on, let, let, let's be professional here. Yeah. After, I, after, look, no. If you just run slower, it doesn't happen. <laughs> Solves I, everything. I, I, I'm not sure, but I think somebody's gonna get mad at that. <laughs> um, we we talked to your coach yesterday, and like for us as as fans, like it's very easy for us to get super excited around like, oh, you took down Trayvon, and it's like now he's facing Christian Coleman, and the other part of it too is just like. It seems like the way he operates is more so like, no, this is all just work, and like the winds might yeah. come along the way, but uh, winds are nice, but not our focus for this indoor yeah. season. It's just getting faster. Yeah, that's exactly what it is. Uh, when you look at the grand picture of things, which is what I feel a lot of people miss, and that's why you got so many internet coaches out there like, oh, he needs to tip at the line, and he needs to bring up his knees, and he needs to bring out his hands. And, you, know, you know, everybody want to coach somebody that don't know the full picture. Um, and when you look at our full picture, it's – winning the double and that is why we're doing 60s and that's why we're doing a lot of them a lot more than i've probably ever done usually i only get two 60 races out of each indoor season you know we just decided that we're going to go to usa's yes or two days ago so now i'm going to get at least five races out of this indoor season in the 60. that's impressive yeah, yeah. We, so what i said before and i taught the reason i'm like obsessed with tweeting out the clips and when you break things down is like for us as, as fans like it's as if like you got Tiger Woods before the Masters telling you like here's what I'm working on yeah. here's how I'm gonna win, and it just like I, I just say keep it up. I mean the transparency is amazing and like just a truly appreciated by everyone on, on the team. I love the YouTube video. Keep that up. I appreciate that yeah. a lot. That's a, a lot of money went into that. <laughs> <laughs> like that. A lot of money goes into that, but I feel it's all worth it. And hearing people say that they love it, it, it makes me like sing because truthfully I, I want to be able to share my journey and. When somebody is like, oh, I want to be just like you, it's like, you really don't. <laughs> you, you, you truthfully want to be you. You just like the way that I'm being me. Yeah. But you really want to just be you. And I can just show you a few ways that, for you to just be you. I don't like warming up that much. So when I'm watching you do like an hour plus of warm ups, I'm like, I'm good. I'll just, I'll keep doing this. <laughs> you know me. what's so funny? It's so weird for me to see people do less than an hour warm up. I was like, every time I see that, it's like, oh, yeah, I'm beating you. Yeah, <laughs> That's how I feel about a four-mile jog. I'm like, you're, you're doing less than four miles for a warm-up. Uh, you know, this brings me back, Noah, like, it's kind of crazy just, like, I don't know, you remember Boston 2018. We did a podcast together. Maybe, I think, yeah. your first ever podcast where we sat down in a, in a hotel room in Boston, yeah, and I yeah. asked him sort of about, like, uh, you know, the compa early comparisons. He was in a very similar boat to Arion where it was like, mm -hmm. no, uh, Usain Bolt is just a name that's being thrown out there. When you're young and you're fast, like, that's constantly going to be a thing. And you said, no, I, like, I don't have any idols or icons in yeah. the sport because you just were so focused on making a name for yourself. Does it feel weird to be on that other side of the coin now where it's like maybe there's that high school kid who's like, you're that icon? Yes and no. It was kind of weird how fast they threw me away. But I also was expecting this day to come. So I was ready for it. But that doesn't mean it didn't hurt any less. But it always reminds me that I do this for me, not for other people. I like That's that. Awesome. Caitlin, you got any any questions for Noah before he goes? Yeah. So yesterday, you were talking to a kid, and he was like, did you see that video when you were talking about One Piece? I just <laughs> need you to at least attempt to watch it. This okay. is anime right now, right? Yes, yeah, so okay. I've tried it three times. Three and I've read it twice. Okay. Oh, if you've read it, okay, then we're fine. We're fine. We're fine. I've tried. I tried to read it. No, I didn't read the whole thing. I got through about 50 chapters. Why did I've, you stop? I just couldn't get to, like, the knowing what has happened mostly through the journey and then watching it and how slow it paced it was i, I was know, just like but king of the pirates like he's coming but how long did that take that's like game of okay, thrones winter like, is coming 
But like world records don't come overnight. <laughs> Winter is coming. Work, Winter is coming. You working for the world record, right? But they didn't even it's talk about. They didn't even though. talk about the treasure of One Piece for more than fifty chapters. I have I'm no idea what happened. Once. <laughs> I have no. I'm wrong. It's a foreign yeah. language to me. <laughs> and you that was can, it. You can relate to Luffy because. You working? I can some, relate to him. Right. I can, so I can relate to them, all of them. Man, and the stories bro. that I hear is great, but how? A thousand, more than I'm a thousand episodes, so, more than a thousand chapters. Here's here's <laughs> what we need. It's it's we've done the walk-ins from like the, you know replicating what the NBA has. I love the photos when they snap LeBron James in the locker room reading a book, and everyone goes crazy. Oh, he's reading uh, Twilight or whatever it is. We just need you in a corner reading your your your, your manga. whatever manga. Well, the it thing might is, be. I read it on my phone. Uh, we don't buy uh, hard copies. Have you not been to the Forbidden Planet money? here in New York? No, I haven't. It's a store. You got it. You got to hit it up. Like it's it's. You walk in there, you'll spend hours in there, I think. So put that on your list while you're in town. All right, I'll put it, I'll put it on the list for sure. All right, no. Can we what? expect, uh, like, pictures from what you're going to wear this weekend? We got to see the photos of, like, how you finna be stepping. Well, I'm going to put, like, last time Jack, my YouTube guy, was the one who took the pictures. Unfortunately, Jack's not here. So it's really up to the we got media. It. We, we got, got, we got, we got, we got, we got, we got a couple guys. We got a couple guys. He got you yesterday. Yes, he did. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Yeah, right. yeah, so it, I've been trying to let everybody know I'm, I'm coming through, and I'm coming through with the drip. Just the main entrance, right? Uh, the, wherever the bus <laughs> <laughs> drops us off. Yeah. <laughs> All right. But, uh, Noah, yeah. we're grateful for your time, oh, and thanks for coming out. Yeah. We got to break down at least one race. Oh, oh. Y'all choosing. Yeah. Uh, the men's Wanamaker Mile, who you got? No, let, let, we got to do a sprint. <laughs> you choose. I mean, I'm always going to choose Drew Hunter, but yeah. <laughs> let's, let's choose a sprint. Any sprint that you want. 400? Okay, 400. I love the four. All right. So I don't like the race, but I love the time. We were talking about how chaotic it is indoors. Like it is you, very chaotic. You have to, like, elbow guys. Yeah. We got the graphic up there. Yeah. That's the field. Now, who you I, got in this one? Yeah, I think it's really important that first we talk about Noah Williams. Um, a strategist to the end for Boston. That man, my coach told both Jareem and Noah because, you know, they're both on, uh, they in our training group. He's like, hey, this is what you do if you get to the pole first, second, and third. And they both followed it to a T. And a lot of people will be like, yo, Jareem, you know, let Noah come through the middle or the inside. Dream didn't let nothing, <laughs> nobody come through. He had to block off Vernon, and that's how Noah, you know, got his opportunity. There was nothing he could do. Everybody did what they did in that Is opportunity. That tactics there? <laughs> yeah, it's right? a lot of tactics, because that's all that indoor is. You know, yeah. whoever gets the break most likely is going to win, and that's what I'm going to say to this. And when it comes to that, Dream got the 200 speed. He has the greatest potential to actually win this race because he has the speed. And I've been watching him early on right now. That's how it's looking. Um, Cherry is known as a finisher, a strong athlete. Consistent. Uh, he is consistent, and he's a kicker. But he has I just haven't seen enough of him running indoor. I know he ran a 300 recently. Um, it's just I'm not sure if it's going to give me enough to be able to beat Jareem to the pole. And then when his speed runs out on that second lap, I don't think he's going to be able to do anything. Noah, again, is that person who's going to challenge him to the line. I like this open tryout for him, yeah. uh, jumping on NBC after, your, after your running is done. But that's not going to be for a while. What's, what's the winning time? <laughs> the winning time? Uh, it, it's, it's probably going to be 45-5. Okay. Okay. I there see you. I see yeah. you. Michael Cherry has run under 45-5 56 times in his career. Not indoor, though. No, no. <laughs> I mean, exactly, because you guys, you guys have outdoor stats. Yeah, yeah. This is indoor. We got to talk about indoor times. <laughs> Completely different race. Not everyone <laughs> has indoor times. <laughs> that is true. That is true. Uh, so Noah, you brought up last week's race. Vernon was on our show. We asked him this question: Where's Marvin? What, 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 you have a message for Marvin? I don't got a. I actually saw Marvin this morning. Okay. <laughs> I don't know what he was doing here, but I saw him this morning. Uh, the rumor is. Nike not playing nice. Oh, oh. all right. Oh. That's the reason. You said that. that. You said that in this house. We gotta get him man. out of here. I, I'm, I'm, hope, I'm praying good things because he's a great athlete and he already got himself a medal um, from Worlds. He's proven himself many times, so I'm really hoping that that works out because so we can get him back on the track. I mean, he was part of the trio that you know swept the hundred, so you know he's definitely wanted. And uh, but I, I am a firm believer. If you ain't getting your money, you need to make them pay for it too. I like it. <laughs> Good stuff. Thanks. Well, All you right. can leave that watch right here, and I'll give it to you. Oh, <laughs> no, <laughs> no, <laughs> one night. No, <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> no. Thanks so much for joining us. No problem, guys. Appreciate it. Thanks for having yeah, me. Yeah. Good stuff. All right. See you, bro. Awesome. Oh, for you. <laughs> a nice little unexpected guest there on our show, but we're always going to make time Some inside for Noah Lyles. Yeah. <laughs> Couple inside scoops. That was, that was good. Uh, 
All right, so we were wrapping up the men's Wanamaker Mile analysis. I feel good. I feel we've analyzed. I think it's time, Chris, for... <laughs> yeah, it's time for... So well, we're going to take a quick break. Like a minute or two. Like a minute or two. Chris is I'm going to get up. mic'd up. And I'm going to go down, hit the track, and try and get some interviews live in real time. It's going to be grid walk style if you're an F1 fan. When they're, they've got the celebrities and they're pulling them aside, that's going to be my job in a little bit. So wish me luck. And I'll leave you guys in Kyle and Caitlin's hands, but I'll see you guys shortly. Alright, we are back. Chris is mic'd up. We've got cameras following him around. <laughs> We've got more athletes in the building. Can, can we gotta play the game? Can we spot the I Chris? I know. Can we spot Chris? Um, I'll tell you when we're live. Alright, can you guys hear me? Yeah, Chris, we can hear you. Alright, so I'm here with Eric Sawinski. Oh, that does not sound what is What is the mission? What is 153 something through 809, so we're probably looking at 151 high, 152 low through 800, and then uh, see how much farther I can get after that and help those guys out. So. so for the people who may not be as familiar, how do these pacing about in terms of just like who requests a pace, like who ultimately... Ooh, I don't know if that's going to work. All right, we're figuring out the audio down there right now as Chris is speaking with Eric Sawinski, who is rabbiting the race the tomorrow. He's become the go-to rabbit across 
the circuit the last couple of years. Obviously. Have you ever been a rabbit, Kyle? I've rabbited the Wanamaker Mile before. When was this? This was in 2016. I was injured, so I wasn't in it. And I yeah. Just, I said I could go 1,200. The day before the race, or two days before the race, Matt Centurist calls me, and he goes, hey, uh, I liked how fast we went out last year. Yeah. No matter how fast you go out, I'm going to be on you. Oh, snap. And they had gone out in, like, 53 it, I think the year before. So I'm like, all right, like, I guess I'll get out. So race starts. I get out. I get out hot. And I look behind me, uh, 150 meters in, Centro is nowhere near me. Jesus. Nowhere near me. Did he just, like, call you to scare you, like, to scare the daylights out of no, you so he, you could I, run faster? He, that's what he wanted. <laughs> so I, I'm looking over my shoulder like a good rabbit should. You should be looking behind you, get a feel for, like, what's going on. I, yeah. I slow it down, let him reattach, and we're playing. Like, eventually, I think Garrett Heath gets on me. I go 1,200 meters in, like, 254, and yeah. he and Nick Will is below by me. Like, they are, they're starting to kick at 400 to go. Yeah. And after the race, you know, they ran like 350, 351 or something. I'm like, what the hell was that? You told me to go out as fast as possible. <laughs> and then look at what you just did to me. <laughs> you made me look stupid. So like, so like, is there like a list of rabbits? Like when they're looking for rabbits, like do they, they have a book and they're just like, I want Kyle Merver to be the rabbit Ooh, for this yeah. race on this day. Like, how does that work? You know, I think someone of Eric's stature now who's been proven is like, He's known entity of, yeah. hey, like, we know we can rely on this guy. And the athletes, I mean, in What's certain up? races, if there's someone who really, really, like, uh, is the go-to yeah. making a record attempt, he might say, like, I got my rabbit or I'm going to bring my guy. or I'm going to bring my guy, you bring yeah. your guy, and then we're all going to have a rabbit yeah, party. <laughs> like, I got this. Um, but, no, it's funny, like, the week before, all the time, it's even still meet directors. Yeah. Asking around, calling everyone. The price keeps going up. Do you like, know a guy? I know a guy. I heard that guy can't do it. Can you get this other guy? That's sort of what happens. Jesus. And the, it's kind of like, you know, at the airport when they say, like, anyone want to take the next flight for 300 yeah. bucks? And it's like, 400 bucks? 500 bucks? Like, what do we have to pay here in order to get a <laughs> rabbit to bring us through the field? So, um, yeah, it's a, it's a fun behind the scenes for everyone except the meat directors. Has there ever been a time where rabbiting doesn't work? Like you're like, okay, I need this guy to go out in this time and he just like absolutely bombs it. Like, does that ever happen? It happens seemingly all the time. And, what? And you know, I think the worst rabbits are, and this is why Eric is very good, yeah. are 800 rabbits. Okay. Because what they do is they get like 400 guys, say I can run a 50, 51. Yeah. But the way that a 400 guy might run a 50 second 400 is going out in 23 yeah. and then dying to a 50 point. Right. Whereas like you need that even pace and like oftentimes the way I describe it is you need someone who is capable of being in the race themselves. Mm -hmm in order to like get a good rabbiting which job. is why you were good at the race that you were talking about exactly. because yeah, you're yeah. like i was gonna run this race anyway so i can do like 12 or 1200 meters and that's how someone like eric is you know like right. accomplished in his own right fully able to go and do it himself yeah for sure for sure i don't know if i would ever want to be a rabbit Test because one, I'm two. Just, like i might as well just keep going like especially like if you start coming up on me like i'm not just gonna let you beat me now i'm in the race yeah, for real you 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 want to race we can race you always think like if i can just keep going like oh I, you say after like i had one more laugh yeah, right, 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 right. Right, right i also do just want to note that chris's audio is fixed yes. he's headed back down Chris's uh, audio is fixed. He's headed back down. We had some technical difficulties, but that's our first one. That was so, our first time. <laughs> we're doing really well. That Mac. was You're like our first one. So we're, we're things are going better. Um, all right. So hopefully Chris is able to find Eric yeah. or someone else in a moment. But no, I mean, rabbit, you get more nervous than yeah. the actual race oftentimes because everyone's counting on you. But then, boy, do they praise you if you do a good job. Like, oh my if goodness. everyone runs the personal best, it's because of you. So, like, is there a... I was going to say, here's a question, Kyle. Which which event has the worst rabbits? I was just saying it's 800. A, that's a very always, easy, and I would specifically say, like, the, the women's 800 rabbits at the elite level, they go out in 20... Six, six yeah, every like, single time. So why time? don't we find better rabbits? That could be you. You could be the new premier. The new league. premier rabbit. Okay. Women's well, eight hundred. I'll put rabbit. that on my on my resume. I'll be the premier eight hundred rabbit. It doesn't pay too poorly either. <laughs> so uh, Noah right, coming and stopping by was pretty sweet. But now yeah. we've got Chris out in the field seeing other athletes. A couple thousand. Oh, oh he's 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 <laughs> yeah. All right, All right, guys. I'm here with Luis Grijalva. Luis, the three K. How you feeling? Feeling pretty good about it. Uh, 
you know, I feel like I'm really strong right now and kind of speedy, but I think it should be a good race up front. I described you as looking like super smooth and easy for that 353 that you ran at BU. How easy was it? Uh, it was easy up until the last 200. Yeah, I, I started making like a, that pain face, but no, I, f I feel like I'm in a good position to do well tomorrow. Um, I think it's going to be fast paced. I think they're trying to pace it at 401 through 1600 meters, so that seems about right. So. Who, who do you have your eyes on? I mean, there's just so many big names in this race, and, like, we've seen what Joe Klecker did at BU, and just, like, I don't know, there's, it's Jordy you're very familiar with and how he races. Like, who do you have your eyes on? Yeah, so I think it's going to be a fast race from the from the gun. So uh, you kind of look at those, like, strength aerobic runners. So someone like Joe Klecker, who's really strong, and then uh, also like someone like Cooper Tier, who's, uh, you know, switched to a more aerobic base group. So those guys are probably the guys i got to watch out for. But then again, and, you know, somebody could pull a Jordy, or Jordy could pull a Jordy, and then get someone at the line. But I don't think it'll be a 7:39 race. It will be more like a 7:30 race. Uh, it, how is training been going in Flagstaff? I mean, it seems like all, out of nowhere, you've got one of the best training groups in the country with with uh, Abdi and Woody's been jumping in workouts as well, right? Yeah, I mean, if you count our 5K times from with Mike Smith, uh, with any of you guys, and uh, you know, I'm at 13:02, Abdi's at 13:06. You got Nico and Drew right around 13:11, 13:12, and yeah, it's probably one of the best 5K groups in the in the U.S. I think, you know, other than Bowerman. But uh, yeah, it's pr pretty. Uh, it's nice. We have a great thing going on. You know, I'm, um, it's fun because I feel, I still feel like I'm in uh, in college sometimes. You know, hanging out with any of you guys. But at the same time, I'm still living the professional athlete life. But it's a good mix of both. You know, I feel uh, I still feel very young mm -hmm. and. It's nice hanging out with 18-year-old freshmen, I guess. <laughs> what uh, what did you learn from this race last year here? Because it was, you know, for a lot of people up in the front, they, were, they had their eyes on Cooper and Cole, and Jordy kicked to the win. But you weren't you weren't that far off either. Yeah, I think last year I made a move a little bit too early. I think uh, with 400 to go, I, I took the lead, and then I, those guys just blew me that last 200 meters. But um, I, I, it's a different race. I think this race would be a lot different. You know, last year we went out pretty slow, 409, and then, we just ended up closing hard, like under four minutes the last uh, 1,600 meters. But uh, I think it's just, you know, making sure I'm in the top three, top four. You know, I don't want to be too far behind or uh, I don't want to be behind the rabbit, of course, you know. Who wants to be behind the rabbit? But we'll see. You never know what can happen. So the last time I think I saw you was, like, at Worlds whenever you got in fourth. Like, you was just, like, this high. I've never seen someone just, like, so thrilled. When did that, I mean, has that calmed down a little bit? Like, just that realization that you were fourth in the world uh, in the 5K. Yeah, honestly, uh, at the time, it was a big shock for me. You know, I didn't, didn't really, couldn't comprehend what I did. But uh, that was last year, man. No one cares. No one cares what you did uh, a year ago or a couple months ago, you know. I think the sport is, like, in terms of like um, people like recent recent success and that was over like seven months ago so I don't care about that anymore uh, I still got a you know goal this year is trying to make the final again and see what we can do from there but uh, I think this year though I got a lot of confidence from racing overseas you know I got into a lot of Diamond League races I've been in a Diamond League race where I went out 742 for the first 3k for a 5k and I think last year at Murrow I was around 741 <laughs> so I I'm not scared, but I'm really confident in my racing and knowing that, um, you know, anything can happen, you know? If I saw this correctly, are you entered in the 10, like in, in the sound running, the 10K? Yeah, yeah 10K. I'm running uh, 10K at yeah, sound running, uh, trying, to, trying to go sub 27, you know? The way, wow. the way I see it is like, you know, um, very new to the event. I haven't done it, of course, other than cross country on grass, but uh, I see I got nothing to lose, you know? I already got the standard for the Worlds for the 5K this year, but... If I could try to get that Olympic standard uh, this coming year, uh, that'd be that'd be great. But uh, you know, I think it's more opportunities to perform at the world stage, so it gives me extra opportunity to uh, you know try to win something really big at Worlds, or uh, it gives me more tactical experience at the global stage. Because uh, you know, diamond league, race, diamond league races are great, but you never get that that tactician uh, you know slow race. It's like sub 13 or faster than that usually. So. I think it's more a championship experience, basically. So, I mean, like a meet like this, you're in the middle of a, you to get to get ready for the 10K. Like you had to be up in your strength work. Like, uh, how does a meet like this just kind of, does it throw things into like a weird fold or like does it all work? 
I think it all works. You a, trust Mike Smith. Yeah. I, I trust Mike Smith. I think it all works around, you know. Like his philosophy and his training is really aerobic based. You know, we do a lot of mileage and then we do a lot of aerobic uh, strength work. So I think, uh, you know, I think with Mike's group, we can run anywhere from 1,500 meters to the half marathon. I think that's that's just kind of his training philosophy, you know. I think if I wanted to, I could run a half marathon in 60 minutes, you know. What? But that's just the way he trains us, you know. I could run 335 and 1,500 to maybe 60 minutes, you know. Yeah, yeah. But, that's how it is. We're ready for anything. Yeah. Awesome. I appreciate it, Luis. Thanks so much. Thanks. Thank you. Did the audio cut out? No, no, no. Oh, all right. All right, but his camera's still on me, probably. Okay. Right now? Yeah, yes, all you're right. still on. Luis, I appreciate it. Thanks so much. Thanks. All right, you can go. Come all right, guys, can you hear me? Very cool to see Chris All right. talking up with Luis. 7.30 race being the call out of what it might be tomorrow. That is, I mean, the idea that 7.30 is now like so casually being thrown out is What's happening pace. with like a lot of the events actually. So, so the day before athletes come up here, pre-meet, I think most distance runners like to just do a few easy strides, rip a couple yeah. 200s, jog a few miles on the front end, front <laughs> on the, on, then a couple on the back end. Right. What do you do in pre-meet? What do I do in pre-meet? Um, I sit in a corner and pray that I'm going to run super fast. No, I'm joking. Um, usually, I'm just doing what I usually do at practice. I think that's the most important thing is, like, keeping it in a routine and not doing anything too crazy. Because when you start doing new stuff, that's when the brain starts going crazy. So I'm not going to do nothing different that I wouldn't be doing in practice. I love the way Noah described the purpose of his and, like, he's yeah. like spring and getting ready for that recoil next right. day, you know. All boiled up, just ready to explode <laughs> out of the blocks. When he said that he takes an hour to warm up, that actually makes so much sense because I think when I was going through fall training, my coach is like, you need to be, like, your warm-up running needs to be, like, 20 minutes. And I'm like, are you kidding me? Like, we literally had 12 200 today. It's like, you take so much longer to, like, get into, like, the rhythm of the workout. Like, you need to take forever to be getting warmed up. So... Well, Max, so we have Chris down on the track, or we got anyone else lined up here? No, he's he's still wandering around. Um, I don't know. We'll, we'll see how how short this next one can be. Chris, we got to keep it quick, buddy. All right. Well, we'll see who we can find. They're coming in and out all day here at the Armory. It seems you know normally you come here at the Armory. We used to have to get here at six a.m. Yeah. To, to get in to practice. Jesus. Because just it's during the indoor season. It's a cycle. Just yeah. Every group's got their hour on the track, and it's right. nonstop. Um, it's looking pretty relaxed back there right now. I'm, I'm looking. It's just been athletes in and out. Everyone's chilling, having a great time. I mean, no the, six a.m.s here. The day before. Our, uh, all right, Chris, take it away. <laughs> All right, guys, I'm here with Bryce Hopple. Bryce, uh, last week's race, maybe not, not, not the best. You immediately shook your head. <laughs> how are we, how are we putting that one behind us and approaching this one? Uh, you know, that one I feel like it just got the, the lactic out of the legs. Uh, we had a tough time coming in, just training. We had an ice storm down in Texas, so not the best training leading up to it. But you know, we're coming back more. That that kind of stuff makes me hungry, and so. Once it happens, it's like not gonna let it happen again. So, so a couple of years pro now, you've been to this meet before. Like, what do you, what do you, how do you, does, do you approach it differently each time out? Like, it's, it's, it's very high profile. The fans are right on top of you. A lot of people are looking forward to it. So, how do you, how do you approach the Milrose games? See, I think it's, it's always approaching like who you're racing. And so, the years past has been against Donovan and some other guys. And so, it's always different. Um, not really sure how I want to take it out this time, but yeah, it's, it's an incredible environment. And so, I'm just excited to get here in front of the crowd and have family members and just run fast with the people watching, yeah. No Cabet, dangerous. Oh yeah, dangerous. I mean, he's with uh, that new, the new Nike squad, and so yeah, it's gonna be something, something fun to watch, and uh, I think we can just do our best out there. So in training, I guess, is there anything in particular that you looked, you talked with your coach that was like, this is the year we're going to focus on executing this part of the race differently or better? Uh, or, I don't know, what, what really stands out to you right now in training? Uh, kind of taking it slow. And so that's kind of like why it's been kind of tough to get going for indoor is we're really looking at it from like a long-term perspective to be ready for when the races count. Because the last year, I mean, I had a good middle part of the season but I was burning out towards the end. And so it's, it's kind of tough. We're working more on timing things better. And so right now it might not be an important time of the year, 
Uh, but I want to race like it. Anytime I get on the line, it's like I'm a competitor, so I don't want to lose. But yeah, it's, I think timing is something that we've been focusing on a lot and making sure we're peaking at the right time, which is it's tough. Do you miss Jonathan at a race like this? Because he kind of like won a couple of years ago. He put the hurt on everyone in the field. But I mean, like at the same time, uh, he raises the bar in terms of the competition. I, I mean, of course I miss him. It's, you want to be racing against the best. I mean, Donovan is a world champion and he really pulled the American middle distance uh, just to, to be for the better. And so it's, it is kind of tough missing guys like those. But I mean, that's where the other guys like us, we got to step up and try to make the people proud and run fast. <laughs> All right, Bryce. Well, I'm wishing you the best of luck. Right, I'll see you. Great. Yeah. All right, let's see who else we can grab here live on YouTube. No commercials. Come on with me. I'll put my headset back on so I can hear who's back at home. Speaking of, no Kabat right there doing his stretches. Get him, get him, Johnny. He's dangerous right now. A lot of people have their eyes on him in that men's 800. Let's talk to Nikki. Nikki, we're live on YouTube right now. You got a word? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Oh, yeah, right on the spot. All right, Nikki. Do my drills with me? I'll do your drills with you. All right, what are we doing? What's the first one? You got to roll, roll back. Okay. No, that's not happening. Not in these pants. <laughs> uh, What's up? I'm, I'm doing well. You're on the big screen right now, too. Well, in just a couple seconds. Yeah. All right, so Nikki, we saw the mile at altitude. How hard was it? <laughs> um, yeah, it hurt. But we went out really slow. Like, we went out in 220 through the eight. So I think that's just, like, how you have to run at an altitude. And then I just closed really hard because I was like, okay, the faster I close, the faster this is over. <laughs> so, uh, something like that, how did it fit into training? Like, how has Coach Mike Smith drawn up the plan to get to this race? Because I'm guessing this is the biggest one for you indoor season. Yeah, I'll do this and then USA next weekend so just like two races but I feel like I always only do two indoors um, but yeah that was just fun to like you know rust buster in the dome and we did an 800 after that and then a little workout after that so it was just like you know like trying to mimic a race but very low-key in the dome in Flagstaff and um, yeah and we ended up running well so it was fun. <laughs> Everyone always says like it takes two years to adjust to a new coach and like their training. You're entering year two. What have you unlocked right now that is like it seems things are going well. Yeah yeah I think I've unlocked some confidence um, which has been huge like training with Ellie she's you know one of the best 5 cares in the country and like she's so good at strength and like you know having Rachel around she's so like just like smart and like wise and like I don't know so just being around them and like I think I really leaned into my strength and like I found confidence in that and yeah uh, Mike's just super cool guy I'm trying to just like be a cool guy like Mike <laughs> how do we beat Laura Muir <laughs> oh man um, I don't know I she's not asking for a crazy fast pace like the rabbit like usually the best person in the field they kind of like are like what do you want the rabbit to go and um you know so she kind of all right i've heard that she requested 210 which is like that's not i've been in the one america mile that's gone like 206 the rabbit you know so it's like i'm like oh okay it's not crazy fast so i think we're gonna just close really hard um i don't know i think just stay as close as i can and if i'm there with 200 to go like I think it's anyone's race. Like it's a really, there's a lot of good kickers in it. So yeah. What's your best Wanamaker mile finish so far? I think I was when Ellie set the American record. I was in that race, but like far back. I thought I ran like 440 because I was like out the back. I ran 424 and was Ooh. like, I think I was six maybe. Okay. So all right. Yeah. Go for the win. Anything better than six is your best showing so far. Exactly. All right, Nikki. Appreciate it. Thanks so much. <laughs> all right. Let's move on to our next interview. Let's see who else we can get. He almost guys had he almost had me doing drills there. Not on not with these pants on. Alright, let's see. Who else we can find? Gabby, you wanna do a live interview? You're live on YouTube right now. How are you I have no You have no choice. Uh, how are you feeling? How's training been going? Uh, training's been going really well, uh, feeling good coming off of Spokane. Um, yeah, I'm excited. This should be a good race. How does that track? I, I've heard a little, it feels a little slower than this one. Like, have you, have you felt out the armory so far? Um, well, I haven't run on the armory since like last year, so it's been a second, um, but I'm about to hop on and do some strides. Uh, 
no no track is probably like BU, but <laughs> um, but no, I like the Spokane race. Uh, the the track's really nice. Yeah, it's brand new. The facility's great. So what's the goal for for tomorrow? Um, well, I have a long-standing PB from like before COVID. Uh, I raced the 3K back in 2020 and ran like 9:11. So uh, that's pretty dated. I'd like to get rid of that, wipe that off the board. <laughs> you, you were smoking Scott Fable in practice the other day, right? What, what was the story behind that? Uh, we just happened to like link up for like the for like a few 200s. So I was doing like a 400, and he paced me through in like 31, and then uh, hopped in for a couple of his 200s. So yeah. Uh, he, Joe didn't get any video footage of the ones where I was running behind him trying to chase him. He only got the one where I was in front. So well, that's <laughs> the only one that counts and matters. But yeah, exactly. I was I was like hoping that Joe got vid like video footage because I was like this will never happen again. So, but yeah, he got some, so that was good. Awesome. <laughs> well, I'll let you get to your strides. Thanks so much for re and good luck tomorrow. Thank you. I appreciate it. All right, let's let's keep it rolling right now. We're on a we're on a nice little hot streak. Should I interrupt? One more and then come up and do some uh, picks up in the booth. Do you want me to come back up? I'm just getting started. Interrupt. Interrupt some people then. Josh, we're live on YouTube right now. Can we get you for an interview? You have no choice. We're live. All right, Josh. Josh Thompson here from the Bowerman Track Club. How's Flagstaff been the last couple weeks? Um, it's been pretty nice. The sun's out melting all the snow. So other than the snow, it's been great. A new, another year with the team, a couple changes around the squad. I mean, like, what? Uh, how have you been matching up in, in practice? Like, where, where are you? Who, who are you working out with, and how's everyone looking? I mean, the team's looking really good in Flagstaff. Uh, you know, Grant, Sean, Mo, they're all really strong athletes. Uh, you know, Thomas Ratcliffe's coming around. He's looking really good. I'm excited to see how he does this weekend. Um, you know, Evan's just as strong as ever, too. So, I mean, we're all just training together. Um, so, yeah, it's been really good. This year in particular, I guess, like, well, it, what have you learned, I guess, from, from last year, how Worlds shook out and everything like that, about just kind of really elevating it, taking it to the next level with the with the 1500 in particular? I guess, like, this is just, like, maybe one or two races for you indoor season, but the focus is obviously going to be outdoors. So how do we how do we get better at that 15? I mean, yeah, I guess making the World Final this past year definitely elevated my confidence. And, you know, I've made some minor changes to try to improve my, my fitness and um, I'm excited to see this outdoor season, what it looks like. It's so, be great. Who do you have your eyes on in your race tomorrow? Oh, the On Boys. I mean, they, they've been everywhere on my Instagram feed, so I'm, I'm pretty, pretty excited to race them and, and see where I'm at. When people are openly talking about records and stuff, like, where does your mind go? You, I mean, you've got to focus on running your own race, but you can't let the win slip away from you. Oh, exactly. I mean, I always just try to race to win, unless it's like a prelim or something, you know, to try to make it to the next round. But So tomorrow I'm, I'm pretty excited. I'm going to try to go for the win, obviously. But if that doesn't work out, I'm still going to try to give my best. Kyle was just talking about how, like, uh, if the pacer goes out, but you don't really want them to, like, if the on guys requested a certain pace with, like, Sawinski, you, there's a way to block that from happening. Just go out and slow it down from the front. Like, are you willing to do that if it's, like, it works in your favor? Uh, no, I, I've had some bad luck trying to go out fast and slow the race down. Still sit back. Uh, so yeah, I'll, I'll probably try and sit back and see see what I, where I get out in my position. So. All right, I'm so interested to see how this race shakes out. Uh, Josh, I appreciate you taking the time. Thank you. Good luck tomorrow. Thank you. All right, Chris. All right, let's keep at it here. Chris, no, we're gonna do some picks. So. Headset back on. Chris, we're gonna do some breaks. Yeah, so. Come on back up to the studio, bud. We need you. We're going to go through every thing that we analyze together. We're going to have the whole team making their picks, break it down. We're going to go for break in, we'll be back in what, 90 seconds, Mac? Just enough time to get Chris into a new headset. All right.
finish line, under 430. Ooh. I got lit at Denny's, bro. <laughs> <laughs> Denny. Are you coming on? <laughs> Come on now. You got twerk certified ring right here. It definitely gets my stamp of approval. The proof. bike would be this like weird. I saw some guy that's all hunched over and it's really dangerous. Why would they do that? Cheers. John, you in or no? Sign him to an NIL deal, right? Yeah, we're gonna we're talking to our lawyers about this, Gary. Don't worry. Being able to work in a team. All right, we got Chris back from the track. Um, now we're gonna get move into our pick segment. But Chris, how was that? You know, chaos. Good. Our, our, our first time ever attempting like a live grit walk style thing, and you know, obviously it'd be really nice to just get ten people for like thirty seconds each. But uh, no, it was good. It was fun. We got some insights from some fan favorites. And uh, I kind of want to go back out there again. Like it was so much fun. And that's me. I'm a I'm a on the field, boots on the ground type of kid. You could take the big J out of him, but you know, there's just a little J deep down inside. Um, but no, I rushed back because uh, we needed to get into our picks. Ran up here so fast that I <laughs> spilled my Olipop all over yeah. my laptop, and so I'm hoping it doesn't get uh, damaged. But let's do it. Let's get, let's 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 rip some picks. Let's rip some picks. All right. I don't know all of your picks either. That's like kind of the exciting part. Mac, do your picks matter? Um, I don't know if they matter, but we have them. <laughs> all right. So what, are we going to go in the order that we have them in the sheet? Um, What's up, easiest Mac. for you, Mac? It, uh, you, guys don't, you guys don't know my list, so just I'll do tell the you. sheet. Do the sheet. All right. So let's start with uh, the women's pole vault. Women and all these picks are presented by Olipop. Olipop. Oh my God, are they? So, uh, for those who aren't as familiar, we've been plugging our sponsor Olipop over the last couple of months. Um, they've been very generous. They've come into the running space and trusted us, and they're like, you know what? You guys have a pretty loyal audience of, of runners. How did you? first describe it as like runners don't typically like to drink runners soda but this is soda. healthy it's for like you look down upon to drink that much sugar and so you know this i think has two grams of sugar in two it grams. but you would never know it tastes delicious and my gut health is through the roof your gut health that's what yeah. my doctor said he's like Are i've you never no seen your gut health like this. Yeah. uh so you can get your olipop at drinkolipop.com you also have a link in our show description try it out for yourself use code sidious 25 for 25 percent off it's delicious. It's the runner's soda. Official. We've made it that thing. All right, let's move to our picks. Kyle, you're the first one on the graphics board. Who it's are you taking? We're, we're allowed to pick the same people, but I'm going to take top off the board. I'm going to go Olympic and world champion Katie Moon. Wow. 495 personal best. You know, just going to get it done tomorrow. I'm taking Bridget Williams. And why is that? Because she's had the best season best so far. Back to back. <laughs> All right. I'm going. I'm, I'm joining Kyle. I'm going Katie Moon on this one. I, I think I have to think of last week's race as um, her last week's showing as a bit of a rust buster. Uh, and this is the time she's finally going to get that Mill Rose win. Katie Moon for the win. This is a bounce back meet for Katie. I think Katie's got it. Katie's got the big meet experience. Bridget did jump really well last week, but I think this is Katie's time to win. All right, let's keep ripping these off. I also want to hear the picks from those in the chat as yes. well. Stay Drop with your us. picks in the YouTube chat. Uh, let us know who you got. We're going to move on to the women's 60-meter hurdles. 
Caitlin, lead us off on this Devin one. Devin Charlton, don't even got to explain it to you. You already know I'm biased. She is in the Kentucky camp, and she is going to win this one. Make it two. I'm picking Devin Charlton as well uh, because she just looked phenomenal last week, and yeah. I think it's going to carry over to this week. Kyle? I didn't know we could jump around, but this is great news. for you. It's probably a little harder for Mac on the buttons over there, but I'm going Nia Ali. 7.80 personal best, the 2019 100-meter hurdles world champion. I think her and her new coach are about to show us something spicy. Ooh. Mac? I'm jumping on the Charlton train. Yes, sir. I think yes, that sir. she's going to get a huge win here. I think that she's going to vibe with the whole, you know, just the, yes. the armory vibe. She's got it. I think, well, representing Bahamas, right? Yes, is that she is. There's, there is a good Bahamas crowd, I think, for, for track here in New York. We, we're going to see him out. We're it's see a him lot out. of Caribbeans out here in New York. That's why I know how to move my hips a little bit. But we're going to talk about that later. <laughs> All right, let's move to the women's 60. I'll lead this one off. Aaliyah Hobbs. When we did the podcast about a week and a half ago, uh, bought my buy or sell was Aaliyah Hobbs because I just think that she's up, up to something special for the rest of the year. I think it carries over here for the Miller Rose games. Ilya Hobbs for the win. I think when you're hot, you're hot, Chris. So I'm going to go with Ilya Hobbs as well. That's 698. I want to see under that 700 oh, oh. meet record, 20 years old, it's time to go down. Mac is struggling with the buttons right now, but he's going to catch up to us. <laughs> Caitlin, rip it. Ilya. <laughs> I can't even be different. Like, yeah, we want hot takes, but when it's there, it's there, and she's got it. So, hops for the win. All right. And, Mac, are you going to be okay here? All right. Rattle him off. There we go. Make it four. Is there we go. Four? Come back, Wait, baby. Is it, four is it four? Come back, baby. Yeah. yeah. We got a sweep. What a comeback. <laughs> Some, right. some adversity back here, but <laughs> no, um, you know, in all seriousness, uh, Aaliyah Hobbs is on one right now. You can tell that everything's going well training. Her racing is going really well. Um, I think last week at New Balance was really just like it's it's her race to lose uh, coming into this meet. And, and I think we might get something special. I, I want D versus record to go down. And I think Aaliyah Hobbs is going to do it. All right. Let's move to the men's 60. When I said been in my pick before, uh, we didn't have the pleasure of sitting down with Noah Lyles. Oh, and I feel bad she was here doing this. this. Oh, I'm going Christian Coleman, though. <laughs> oh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm going Christian Coleman in the men's 60. I think Noah's up to some really great stuff. But I, this is Christian's event. I, and what happened last week isn't going to happen. And, it, and Noah's going to clip this and tweet it out after he, after he wins. Uh, Caitlin, hit us. I'm going with Big C, C, C Square, Christian Coleman. You already know he's coming with the heat. I mean, he is the world record holder. Noah, love you bad. But, I mean, like I said, I'm biased. If you're coming from the Kentucky camp, I'm giving it to you. Kyle. I'm not just saying this because he crashed our show. <laughs> I think he's got a couple good races under his belt right now. He's looking mean. I said it this week in the lap count. Noah Lyles is dangerous. And yes. I think that we're going to take a couple more notches off that personal best. This you is just, you just want his watch. And you, you're hoping that this is just... Uh, he's not going to give you his watch, Kyle. You're, you're, you're to touch it. <laughs> <laughs> Mac, Yo. who do you got? I wish I could change it now after <laughs> listening to that. No, but give me Christian Coleman. Three of four. I think uh, this is his event. I think this is where he shines. And yeah, I know his 634 is at altitude, but I don't care. That's one of the most impressive <laughs> races I've ever seen. He's so good at the 60. All right, let's move to the women's shot put. Are we all going chalk on this one? I'm going Chase Ely, uh, the world champion. Even though she's a little bit banged up uh, coming into this race. I race. I, uh, what? Shot. Shot, yeah, it, coming into this event. I, Are you a fake throws guy? No, yeah. I just chugged an Olipop, and <laughs> now I'm, I'm spinning. Uh, I've got Chase in this one. Uh, Chase is the future world record holder in this event. Here first. I don't think Another it's happening call. right now, but taking Chase. I am also going to take Chase. Mac. And for a clean sweep. And what is the, uh, what's the American record? Do we know? Uh, we can pull the it up. The American record in the event is 20.21 by Michelle Carter. Book it. We're getting an <laughs> AR tomorrow out of the women's shot from Chase Ely. <laughs> Wow. All right, let's go to the uh, 
Uh, men's shot put. I cannot pick against this guy because he's my pal, Joe Kovacs. <laughs> We're buddies. I'm, You're the I'm, godfather. I'm le- <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, I don't think so. But uh, I'm leaning into the dad strength uh, storyline. I think it, Joe's going to be on one this year. He's not out here. I hope his flight gets in on time. <laughs> I'm going Joe Kovacs. Look, I, I heard about the Krauser slide, and that's why I'm going with my former teammate at the University of Texas, the Olympic champion, the world record holder, Ryan Krauser, takes this one. All Listen, right. I know Mr. Krauser is the man, but I'm going to go with Joe Kovacs because Ooh, it's always yes. back and forth between those yes, two. Caitlin. I feel like it's always a safe option. <laughs> like, if I don't want to pick Krauser, I could pick Kovacs, and either way, I'm probably going to be right. So. Nick Ponzio is going to be pissed if Mac doesn't pick him. Who we got? <laughs> this is Nick Ponzio erasure. <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, I think that it takes a little bit of a uh, a little while for the dad strength to really come through. I think that his <laughs> lack of sleep is gonna catch up to him. That's why I am picking the new, the new throw technique in Ryan the Krauser. Slide. And I think Krauser I don't know. Slide. I'm so interested in this, and I think everyone over there is gonna be paying attention to it. I can't wait for all the videos and all the throws accounts all over social media to just break this down. It's gonna I be see awesome. you, Throwers Universe. I'm gonna turn on post notifications for when you uh, break that thing down. Uh, yeah, I wish the throwers were here because I would have gone into that cage and dodged, seen, <laughs> just dodged some throws while trying to get an interview. Uh, all right, let's keep let's keep this thing going. Men's eight hundred. This would have been really awkward if I would have uh, gone to Bryson after already making my pick. I'm going Noah Cabet. I mean, we were talking about how dangerous he's looking. I, I I feel bad that he wasn't on the graphic that we rolled up before. I'm, I'm going to make it up for him. I'm picking him for the win. Coach Pete Julian said he only knows he's right over there. Run. It's all gas, no brakes. He's the silver medalist in the World Indoor Championships in 2022. He's 18 years old. I'm going Noah Cabet. I am going to bet against the, the most dangerous man on the track uh, today, and I am going to say that it's going to Murph the Smurf. Clayton Murphy. Wow, okay. I like that. He did run and win that 1K at the American Track League just a couple weeks ago. Yeah. Um, and in the past, we've seen him run the mile, but now he's dipping down to the event that earned him an Olympic medal. So I like that pick, Caitlin. Mac, hit us. Give me Bryce Hopple. He's experienced. He knows how to run indoors, uh, and he he's the returning winner. I think he's, he's doubling. He's got it back to back. This is the most variety we've seen in our, yeah, in our picks, uh, but I think it's about to get pretty hectic and crazy. Let's go to the women's 3K. There's just something to, you know, we've saw, we've seen Alicia Monson publicly throw down that workout on our YouTube channel, follow it up with a win at the Dr. Sander Invitational, but... You know, sometimes you just got to bet with your gut and think that there's some unknowns that are leading to something. I'm going with Elise Cranny in this one. Uh, yeah, I mean, like, it, uh, Alicia Monson got the best in the last head-to-head battle over 3K, but, again, Terry Schumacher would not have let them run this race if he didn't real, uh, think that there was going to be something special. So I'm going Elise Cranny in American record fashion. Uh, it's tough to, to bet against Alicia Monson after what we saw so far in the mile this season, but... The range of running 359 for 1500 and 3014 for 10K in one season. I just got to think that 3K American record is going down at the hands of Elise Cranny. I'm going to be honest, y'all. I don't know too much about distance races. So, <laughs> um, Who did you pick? Yeah, what, what, what are you going with? I'm one? so excited for I this one. Courtney she picked the Wayman. pacer. Oh, oh yeah. all right. <laughs> because um, she's the NCAA GOAT. That's all I know. Hey, <laughs> no hurdles this time. <laughs> no hurdles. No hurdles. No hurdles, no water. Just straight 3,000 meters. You got it, girl. I like the logic. Sleeper. <laughs> uh, Mac. Give me Alicia Monson. I saw that workout with my own two eyes, and it wasn't hard. She is so fit right now, and Dathan was just glowing about how fit she is. So, yeah, I'm going to be a little bit of bias here because I've seen that with my own two eyes. Give me Alicia Monson to win the women's 3K. And it's going to be in an American record. Yeah. Book it. Uh, <laughs> I love Mac this week. Book it. Mac's, uh, Mike's, Mac's doing his Oprah thing. You get an American record. You get an American record. <laughs> We've got uh, 10 American records. <laughs> Yeah, 
And in races that are not being won by an American, he's given an American yeah. record to yes. Noah Kovac. Um, all right, let's move to the men's 400. We're jumping around in distances, but we, this is how we have them laid out in our word doc in front of it. I wish I had that cherry vanilla Olipop right now. <laughs> I'm telling you. I got root beer, though. But Michael Cherry, Mr. Consistent. Uh, you know, that was a bad joke. I don't, I'm not worried about this indoor-outdoor thing that Noah is talking about. <laughs> if you can run 45 five 56 times that's what it's going to take tomorrow to win that's our man the roof doesn't hurt <laughs> kyle you are just completely incorrect I say <laughs> the winner will be noah williams they be cooking up some wild stuff down there in florida and i'm just saying it's a little hard to be betting against them in 400 races see i'm i <laughs> i'm gonna go a different direction here i'm going <laughs> jareem richards because it's like no, it didn't really make it all that clear as to like who's been looking better in practice. Oh, he did it. So I'm going Jareem on this one, world champion in the 400. Uh, Mac, who you got? Honestly, I don't remember who I picked. <laughs> this is going to be a surprise to all of us. <laughs> oh, oh, yeah. Cherry. Let's go, Michael Cherry. It's Mr. A consistency. Cherry Oreo sandwich. Yeah, <laughs> Mr. Consist consistency. Um, I don't, you know, I don't know. I'm a fan of his. I, I like his social media game. The Twitter fingers. Uh, all right, let's move to the men's 3K. I just sat down with the guy, and, and although he seemed to play it pretty chill, I'm going Luis Grijalva on this one. I, I liked how the 3K looked. I mean, the, I like how the mile looked uh, just a couple weeks ago. We saw what Woody Kincaid threw down, his training partner in the 5K, that, you know, I believe in Mike Smith. So I'm going with uh, Luis Grijalva. Kyle? I'm saving mine. I don't want to go yet. <laughs> All right, Caitlin, who'd you have in the 3K? She does. <laughs> I have no clue what's going to happen tomorrow, so I chose Olin Hacker. <laughs> All right. Oh, All right. Oh, oh, yeah, I know that guy. Right. Wait, I know that guy. He had a really big PR at Nationals. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Who you got? Am, am I going? Yeah, we're gonna, Kyle wants to save the best for last. I'm going Luis. Uh, I think Joe Klecker is going to pull this thing from the front. Luis is going to sit in that pocket really comfortably, and I think he's going to have enough at the end to hold everybody else off. It's going to be an awesome race. I'm looking the most forward to this race. Ooh. This is now easily the most controversial board that we will have in the pickums <laughs> because we're not going to have Cooper Tier on it. We're not going to have Jordy Beamish. We're not going to have Nico Young because I'm going with the half marathoner. I'm going with Josh Kerr. I said it on the Sidious <laughs> Mag podcast. Eight You're leading into it. Yeah. We're knocking a full minute and a half <laughs> oh off our God. personal best this weekend. Oh my because God. Josh Kerr does not show up unless he's ready to play. And I hear he's very ready to play. 329, 348. It would just be perfect if he could throw in a nice 728 for us. Oh, my God. Josh Kerr taking this one. Cooper Tier for sure thinks that we hate him. I left him off the graphic by accident uh, announcing who's in the field uh, who's uh, racing at Milrose. Now we don't even have no, him on this. The intern. I can't believe this is our lineup right now. <laughs> we, we What's some... wrong with Olin? I mean we just don't have Cooper Tier on. <laughs> He's like the favorite. Uh, Alright. Let's move to the women's 300. Mac just just have them all pop up yeah. at the same exact time. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yours is out. <laughs> That's mine. <laughs> the next they one. all look the same. She's holding her hand oh my God, across the board. Oh, pretends to be shocked. We're all picking Abby Steiner. <laughs> <laughs> World record or no? Yeah! I'm going yes. Ozzy vibes only. <laughs> <laughs> Positive vibes only. World record. I mean, that would just be another world record holder that Coach Hall has coached. So why not? So is there anything special that happens at Kentucky? Like when you break a world record, did you get a little banner in like the track facility or anything um, like that? I guess we'll throw you a little party. <laughs> all right. Okay. Pizza party. A little pizza party. Uh, all right. Next event, women's 600. I think we all know whose house this is. Do, 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 do. It's Ajay's house. Ajay's house. I'm going Ajay. Kyle's going to Ajay. Caitlin's, Caitlin's going, going Ajay. Ajay. Mac, the tribe Ajay. has spoken. Ajay Wilson for the win in the women's 600. Now, tomorrow. if I could have, like, a 10% a of the screen be Shamir. <laughs> just, like, I just want, like, we a little sliver. Like, like, I want. The little, like, the little slithers right I there. I want the people to know that I think Shamir does have a shot here. Are you betting against Ajay? But I'm Ajay betting on Ajay. Ajay. You're betting on Ajay. But then if it happens, I'll be like, hey. That's remember? bad luck, Kyle. <laughs> 
Uh, Mac, were you going to add anything about Shamir? No, I just, uh, Shamir is uh, 600, really impressive. Um, I, it seems to be she's really intentional about building that strength, um, doing something a little bit differently, um, you know, to... I don't know if she's going to move up to the 800 or if this is just strength building for the 400 hurdles. I don't know what it is, but she's looking better now than she has in the last couple of years. And it's awesome to see. We've been on here for two hours and I feel like it's been building, building, building for this. Our picks for both the women's mile and the men's mile. So let's go ladies first. Once again, I, she just wowed us at the fifth Avenue mile. It's coming in as a favorite. Wouldn't, wouldn't sign up for this race, I think, unless there was she knew she was going to blast it. I think Laura Muir is going to take the win and get under Ellie Purrier St. Pierre's uh, rec- Milrose Games record. Look, I used to think that altitude conversions were bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> and then I went to altitude, <laughs> and now I think that there might be some merit there. You went to altitude one time and then never <laughs> and went I'm back. Never going back. <laughs> I think Nikki Hilt is taking this one. They ran 421 to win the Sir Walter Mile last summer. I think they're getting under 420 and they're taking it. It's the Nikki show out there. Wow. Okay. Let's go to Caitlin. Now look, I love Nikki. But I heard the Brits were coming. <laughs> so I'm picking Laura Muir to win the mile tomorrow. You know what happened last time they came to New York, right? Okay, I know what happened. But <laughs> <laughs> we're in Fort Washington. <laughs> Don't worry about it again. We're talking about American we must history. This house. <laughs> I'm sorry, but I'm rooting for the Brits this time. Wow. All right, Mac. Uh, give me Josette. Okay. Uh, yeah, I think that... Laura's performance last week is, is going to sort of give her, uh, she's going to be a little afraid to pull from as early as she usually does. So I think that's going to allow someone like Josette, who gets out strongly in almost every single race that she does, to be able to sit in that pocket. Um, if Nikki does commit early, and especially during that third 400, Nikki can win. But ah, I like Josette's chances of committing early, sticking to the pace and being strong enough to hold people off at the end. I can read the message boards now that when he's not drinking Olipop, uh, Mac Fleet is, is sipping the OAC Kool-Aid. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think I might be right now. Uh, all right, uh, let's hit the men's Wanamaker mile. We'll save Kyle for last because I'm sure no, like he's going to have... I'm going last. No, Mac, uh, is, Mac last. is going to go last. Okay, all right. Caitlin, let's lead, you lead us off. The goose this. is loose. Okay. <laughs> Yard's gonna win. All right, Caitlin's going yard in a goose. She was just wowed by the three K a couple weeks ago. Watch no. the interview. That's not the goose. That's not the goose. <laughs> that is not the goose. All right, we need to fix uh, Caitlin's Change graphic. Caitlin's back. <laughs> no. That's not what you selected oh, in the Google Doc. Oh, that's not what's in the Google Doc. Oh, I Caitlin. thought you said that's the one that I no. messed up. No, you messed up. Yeah, you messed up this race. You picked an invitational mile winner, the B section winner. Oh, Lord. All right, we'll skip it. Kayla but you know, here's, here's, here's what. Both of them are going to win. It's not. So here's the thing it's like the YouTube chat is saying, I just love how much Caitlin just doesn't know the distance <laughs> events. But that's that's fine. All right. So, Caitlin, you're going, we're going to give you a pick. We're going to help you out. No, what's wrong with the goose? Who you didn't pick the goose, but we, we had Caitlin uh, penciled in for Cole Hawker, I believe, right? Yes. All right. We voted for you. We want to make our board look a little bit more good. Okay, Yard Yard and Cole are going to come across together. Like, they're going to hold hands, (laughs) and they're going to cross together. All right. Uh, I'll I'll go next. I'm going Ollie Hoare, defending the title. Uh, He... He's, I think he's holding something back. Like we see how he's doing in, in in practice, matching up with the rest of the guys. But you know, I walked away from the conversation I had with him yesterday about like, yeah, I mean, like, it's nice that like your closest training partners are not competing with you for your spots on a team, but you get to a meet like this, and like they are your biggest competitor. So how do you like keep cards to the chest, close to your chest, and and save something for race day? And he explained it to me. Just exa- this is exactly how Dathan drew it up. He's going to have a conversation with Dathan, and I think he, they're all going to get different race plans. I believe you in, in how you said that they're all going to be told just sit on Sawinski. Um, I this is his event. I'm going. I'm going. Uh, Ollie Hoare. He said he was going to drink out of the trophy again uh, if we get him on the show. So let's uh, uh, Ollie Hoare for the win. All right. Well, look, only one guy here. 
was fourth at Worlds last year. And he ran 7.34 for 3K, but he didn't win the race, and everyone's just kind of forgetting about him. But when he was the NCAA mile champion, his 3K personal best was 7.47. So for Mario Garcia Romo to now have knocked off 13 seconds from his 3K from last year to this year, what does that possibly mean about his ability to come in here and sweep the floor of the armory? He's going to crush everyone that last 200 because he's going to run tactically perfectly as my boy always does. Mario Garcia Romo for the win. And right. now for our grand finale, it oh. is Mac Fleet with his pick. All right, yes. Mario did place fourth last <laughs> year, and he seems to be really strong. He's adapting to OSC really well. We have the returning champ, 347 miler, Ollie Hoare. Tough to bet against him. And we have Cole Hawker, who won both uh, 3K and mile last year uh, indoors, placed sixth at the Olympics. Um, he's going to be back strong. But ultimately... They're all going to be fighting for second. What? Who do we got? Because <laughs> the goose is loose, baby. <laughs> oh, no. <Did> you, <laughs> no! Be so serious right and, now. And Yard Nagoose <laughs> is walking away with an, another American record in the mile. Book Back. it. Do not make Yared Nagoose drink an Olipop. Do not make Yared Nagoose drink that vintage cola Olipop. Oh, my oh God. Oh, my God. Are you proud of using the company card on that uh, on that goose head? <laughs> I can't take I you seriously. I think the show's over. Oh, man. All right. There you have it. That is oh, how man. we're going to close out this show. You've got all our picks. This was a lot of fun. We're experimenting with doing a pregame show at Meets. Many thanks to uh, the good folks at the Armory, Jonathan, Rita, Zakia, and especially uh, Ray Flynn, the Meet director, for opening his doors and allowing us to do this. Hopefully we can do a postgame show tomorrow. I thought this was really engaging. I think we helped build out a lot of the storylines for, for tomorrow. Yeah, I mean, Kyle, what were your first ta your takeaways from doing this? This is fun. I enjoy doing this. I mean, this is conversations that we're having privately. It's nice to throw up YouTube and have the conversations with other people in the chat and watch at home. I mean, this meet, this is, this is the meet. This is our indoor season right here. There's no bigger meet happening. And so uh, this place is going to be packed. I, I believe it's sold out. Tickets that are being resold are very expensive. <laughs> like this is a, this is special. This is track field at its absolute best. I always say, if you're gonna bring a fringe track fan to a meet, bring them to an indoor track meet like the Milrose Games, and you'll get someone for life. Caitlin, any final words before I close it out? Last time I was at the Armory, I was racing myself and had the absolute worst experience possible. So being here this weekend and feeling all the good vibes before. Saturday happens, I'm just knowing that my vibes will change about the armory and then I will no longer go to sleep hating it because of the fact that I get so sad when I lost that race that day. But it's okay. Um, it's like you guys are saying, it's been really fun hanging out, chatting about the stuff that is going to happen this weekend because honestly, at the end of the day, with sports, you never know. So, like, all of our picks could be completely wrong. We could have, you know, our 853 guys <laughs> coming in first place. So, it's going to be fun to see everybody. And I think the most important thing is what you guys are saying, the fact that this place is going to be packed. We need track to transcend itself and to be inside of mainstream media. So, the fact that this place is going to be packed, I think we'll have something to show. All right, so for those who stuck with us for the two hours, thank you so much. If you tuned in and missed any part of it, it'll be available for a replay. Thanks, everyone who's watching. Be sure to subscribe to the City Smack YouTube channel for more. We've got interviews from the press conference yesterday, and we're going to be bringing you interviews from the Mix Zone tomorrow. If you enjoyed this, let us know. Hit us in the comment section. Tell a friend. Tweet a clip. Whatever it might be, we had a blast. Thanks for tuning in. Chris Chavez, Kyle Merber, Caitlin Hutchison, Mac Fleet. Signing off. We'll see you guys tomorrow.